What is up, Fence fam? And welcome back to another live Ask the Experts with me, Joe Evers, the Fence Expert. Guys, I am super excited for today. It When we talked to these guys last time, like I, seriously, I don't know who you need to ask, but when I left this, I was just I was happy the rest of the day. These guys are they've got a huge channel over in the UK. They do a lot of good work. I love watching them personally. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, let's have them on. Gentlemen, how are you? Hello. Hi, are you all right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, good to have you guys back on. Wicked, we're glad to be back on. So first and foremost, I appreciate you guys being on today. Uh, so to bring the viewers in, uh, we were having a WhatsApp chat uh, earlier this week, actually. I said, hey, guys, the, the video's done. Uh, you know, Could you be on? And Dave says, oh, we're slammed this week and next week. And I said, hey, that's that's a life of a fence guy right now. I get that. Um, but yeah, but here you are. So thank you. I appreciate that's you cool. making time. That's what, well, <laughs> only just, we literally came in through the door. So to bring the viewers in. So typically like before this thing goes live, I'll have some, I'll have whoever the guests on and we'll chat for a little bit. Uh, this time you guys came in like while the countdown is going <laughs> like, just in the nick of time. <laughs> well, first and foremost, Stevie, congratulations. Thank you. You got Thank your you. license or is I've it your certificate? It. Yeah, it's like it's, it's an extra part of the license. So we call it as class two. So um, okay. it means that rather than being able to drive a car up to or a van up to three and a half tons, nah, you get extra weight. So you can go to the big boy wagons and stuff like that. Such as a grab. Yeah, that's it. All right. All right. So now you got, you guys are beasts. So you put in a full day's work and, and then you come on here. So tell me, Steve, today, did you drive the grab? I've been driving the grab. Hi, I've yes. been in charge of the grab. All right. All right. It's I'm always hard. YouTube as well. So that's always a bonus. What's that? I'm sorry. We filmed it for YouTube as well, so that's a bonus. Yes, I I will wait <laughs> patiently for tomorrow's uh, tomorrow's video or Wednesday video. Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday. I was gonna say that's like it's pretty quick. Pretty. Oh, yeah. I'll be waiting. I'll be waiting on Wednesday, uh, guys. If you if you don't follow DJ Projects, their link is in the description below. If you're watching us on YouTube, go check them out. David and Stevie have an incredible channel. Uh, it is so interesting for me to watch just how things are similar yet different and uh mm. over in the uk That's but it. uh what what our plans are is we're going to chat here for a little while and then we're all going to watch the this week's video which is my reaction to a dnj projects video um so the video the video that we're reviewing is david you did basically a how to uh build <laughs> fence a, a while back right yeah. and uh yeah i I, it was it was fun for me to review. It really was because it was actually uh, uh, discussing it today because yeah. we was actually asking the question to each other of we <laughs> wonder which one it's actually going to be. Yeah, um, that's the one. It, the I one that, uh, that did come up in conversation about <laughs> if it would be that one. Yeah, I like it because you know, Dave, you you showed us you laid out all the tools. Yeah, you need this tool and that tool, and this is how you do. I was like, this is the perfect video to review to show. You know, like I said, similarities and differences. You know, yeah. we we all have to use diggers, right? Hand diggers and levels and all that jolly goodness. So it was uh, it was fun. But you guys use a few extra tools, which would be the uh, we would call it a concrete saw, right? Just the the uh, circular blade yeah. there, because you guys use concrete posts. Oh yeah, and we <laughs> talked about this at length last time, but I just. We're going to talk about it some more because uh, I, it's such a great idea. It really is. Um, if there's one thing, and I talked, so we had a training event here in the States up in Nebraska two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and it was uh, basically as a continuing education for fence, fencing professionals. And, and me and two and three other guys are, are, were having chats. I was like, guys, we have to figure out how to get on board with concrete posts because it just it makes so much sense from the get-go. Yeah. Um, Such yeah, a simple for, idea as well. What's that? Such a simple idea of a, a mold of concrete. Yeah. Oh, it, concrete and reinforcement, right? Yeah. Reinforced rod. So it's not it's not tricky, but it's just but 
I don't know. I don't know why it hasn't caught on. And you see it, I mean, obviously in the UK and in various other parts of Europe, right? I mean, it's a pretty common style. Yeah. I'm not sure why it hasn't made it made it over to us yet. We see it on <laughs> highways, uh, highways and interstates. You know, when we're talking 30, 40 foot tall uh, sound barriers uh, that are solid concrete, they use concrete posts. So we need to bring it, we need to That's minimize good. it yeah, and put yeah. it in yards. Well, guys, let's do this. Let's say hi to a few folks, and then I've got all the questions in the world. Kev Dox has been here since ye yesterday afternoon. I uh, <laughs> posted this question. Galvanized or stainless steel I've nails, I would assume, for wood pickets, which do you prefer? I live in Florida and use stainless, but lately customers have been asking for galvanized. Follow-up. And normally it's the customers that move down here from up north that want galvanized. I live on the coast. So, guys, I'll ask you. So, one, you guys have, is it the Panelmatic? Is that what you? Panelmaster, yeah. Panelmaster, yeah. yeah. Panelmaster, that's <laughs> another piece of great equipment. Uh, <laughs> what what type fasteners are you using? What type nails are you using in that? As a galvanized, but someone did ask me in the comments about stainless steel. So, we don't use stainless steel over here. And it says, oh, if, if you use stainless steel, the panel's going to last longer. But I think the galvanized nails last just as long as what our, our wood does anyway yeah i i agree with you i do so we use we'll use a hot dip galvanized ring shank yeah. nail um for us here in here in the midwest it's fine so our air isn't as corrosive now kev mentions that kevin mentions that he's on the florida coast so he's right on the ocean and so typically oh. the ocean side environments are really corrosive I mean, they'll, they'll just chew through metal so maybe that's maybe that's a consideration yeah yeah definitely yeah so i mean cap for you i mean stainless steel is the way to go right but if you were to take me from missouri and throw me into florida i'd probably ask you for galvanized too just because that's what i'm used to seeing and using but stainless steel would be the way to go we looked into stainless steel nails a bit more expensive than galvanized <laughs> about three times three to four times as expensive and that was, we looked into it probably two years ago. So pre-pandemic, there's no telling what those nails are, are costing now. Someone from over in your neck of the woods, background property. Looking for, hi, folks. Looking forward to it. From Scotland. Background property. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Very good. Some, some, some folks you know? Just for you, Paul, yeah. Yeah, I've spoken to Mitch, just for YouTube. Yeah. Yo, it's fun. Isn't it funny where you meet people like that, where you see them in your comments repeatedly? And yeah, yeah. So there's, I'm gonna scan real quick and see if he's here yet. There's a gentleman named Roger Bentoncourt. He's every week. He's in the comments. He's telling people. He's reminded me to remind people to hit the like button and such <laughs> like that. Uh, never met him in person, as far as I know, but uh, I'd sure like to one day. But backer properties, hello, Craig Armula. Oh, man, I butchered that, and I apologize. Yarmula? I'm not sure. Craig, I apologize, but welcome. He's here from New Jersey. He's a Jersey boy. Liam Bro wants to know, where are DNJ projects based in the UK? What's that? Uh, so we're in the middle of the UK in the East Midlands in Nottingham, so Nottinghamshire. Um, and if we're being specific, we're in Baseford in Nottingham. Baseford in Nottingham. There you go. There you go. So I'm going to show my ignorance here. Uh, not so is there still the forest there, Nottingham Forest? So Nottingham Forest is the football club. Okay. Uh, and there's Sherwood, Sherwood forest, forest, which is a big forest. Okay. All big right. Oak, big oak tree, right? Yeah. Big oak tree. Old, really, really, really old oak tree. Very oak good. Tree. Very good. You know, here. So I want to come visit. Yeah, you know, it's something that I've thought that I've thought about for a while. And I can't wait. So I watch your videos, specifically the uh, traveling videos in the grab where you guys are driving around. Man, I it, it's funny from a perspective. So that's your guys' normal everyday commute, you know, driving through town. It's so different that it's just, I can't wait. I just, uh, yeah, you guys have a good over there. <laughs> Gary Harding, hello, says, Two good YouTubers. I agree. That's why I had them on. I agree. Thank I you. agree. 
I am here to judge you. So that's a screen name. <laughs> Best dad and son team. I Thank concur. Uh, wicked. So Pretty now let, comments. Yeah. let's talk about this too. So is it still uh, dad and son? Or is it yeah, dad yeah. lad? Because that came yeah. up. We're, we're going to stick with the dad and son. Um, obviously, there was a bit of discussion in the comments, and there was a few back and forths of what everyone's sort of opinion is on it. Yeah. But because we sort of started with the arm dad, arm son, I think that is the way to keep it. Even though, obviously, the dad and lad rhymes a little bit better. Yeah. Um, the dad, arm dad, arm son. It's Some means yeah. more as well. Some, son's yeah. got more meaning. Rather yeah. Than yeah. Yes, yeah, son's more personal, mm. I think. Yeah, yeah I agree. I agree. I, I waited. That was my vote. I voted on dad and son. Project Rebuild? Hello as well. Hello, hello, hello. Andy Man, hello to you. Ben Kirby, big up, Dave and Stevie. <laughs> big up to you, son. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, so this point's correct. Craig says, just like all the innovations overseas, it takes time to get to the USA. Mm. That's the truth. But we're going to start it here. We're going we're to push from here that concrete posts are the way. Someone has got to be the first to do it. So uh, It's the truth. And it, you may as well do it, Joe. You may as well get right. into so, it. So here's here, – letting everyone in on a thought in my brain, and I don't know if it's going to happen, but I want it to happen. So I want to do a video where I come visit you guys Ooh. and learn all about the concrete post, the gravel boards, the proper way to build a proper fence and uh, do a video on that. But then have that be like the introduction of yeah. this style of fence here to the States. Yeah. I think that would be good. Yeah. That's the plan anyway. I don't know when it's going to happen, but one day. Look forward it's a, to it's that. a long flight over to you guys. I checked that oh, out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, not, it's not around the corner. No, 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 no. It, it's just about a full day's travel. It really yeah, is yeah, with connections yeah. and such. Frank is giving us a shout out from Ireland. Love the standard of work on the projects channel. I agree. I agree. Shout out from Ireland. Love the standard of work on projects channel. Oh, yeah. Big shout out to Ireland. We're a big fan of the Irish. Yeah, we are a big massive fan. Of the fan. Irish. <laughs> Yeah, and, and Frank hits the nail on the head, I think, on why I enjoy watching you guys so much. It's just, to his point, the standard of quality. Yeah. Uh, you yeah, can I tell. Just we pride yeah. ourselves on as well. We want to make sure that every single thing we do is, if it's not perfect to us, then it can't be perfect to the customer. And I think yeah. we go the extra mile to make sure that the standard of the work is at that level. Um, yeah. So I mean, that's your been, reputation. That's, it's just second nature to us now we don't actually yeah. have to think about doing that it just happens yeah well i'll just tell you from from the other side of the screen it comes through uh mm -hmm. that that you guys take yeah. a lot of pride in what you do so yeah, i good. i have to think that if i lived if i lived around in your guys's area there in the uk that that that's your reputation yeah. right is that it gets done the first time that you don't have to follow in behind you guys to see what was missed and what wasn't done that you just know that when DNJ Projects is done, it's done. Let's right. let's talk about that, guys. I, I, there's a ton of comments, and we will get to them. But <laughs> I want to kind of have conversations as they come up because I've been known to forget something where I want to talk about it and I let it go, and then it disappears. Something that's going on here at our office lately is checklists, mm -hmm. right? Make sure all the boxes are ticked before we go. Uh, because we're all human, right? You're wrapping up a project. It's the end of a long day. Something gets overlooked, right? Did all the nails or did all the pickets get nailed? We build on site. So did all the pickets get nailed? Did everything like that happen? What What's your guys' process? So the, the project's done. How do you guys make sure that all the all your check marks are ticked? It depends on the project. If we're talking fencing, because there's, it just happens so naturally because it goes a post, a gravel board, a panel, and then you start it again. You start the process all again. It's hard to forget and miss something when it comes to the fencing in that aspect. If we're doing camp rail fencing, which is all timber, then there is a chance that you may miss a couple of nails and just have to check back over to make sure you've 
nailed every every part of that um, fence. But when it comes to the concrete fencing with the timber panels, it would be very, very hard to miss something because it would be a vital part of the fence. So you would know instantly. Yeah. Yeah, you would probably just know at sight that something's yeah, a bit off. Yeah. And... That's it, yeah. Well, and, and by the time the panel gets out on the job site, you guys have already had quality control there in the shop. Yeah, well, it's, passed, it's passed so many people. So the person who's made it, and then he lifts it and puts it in place where it is, then Stevie and his team will lift it up again. So it's had so many eyes on it before it's even arrived to site. So it's really hard for anything to go out there which has been missed. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. And like I said, that's just something that we're, we're going through right now. It's not, it's not something that happens often, but often enough that we've kind of come to the decision that uh, we're just going to create a checklist that way, yeah. whoever is on that job that day starts at the top and ends at yeah. the bottom. And so long as all the boxes are ticked, that everything's done. That's it. It's perfect. Having a checklist. It's actually a really good idea. Cause then no, You've, you're never going to miss anything. You're going to run right. down that list. Everything's going to be perfect. And if something isn't perfect, you can refer back to the checklist to see what it was. Yeah. Well, that, that's right. That's right. So, you know, uh, two weeks later, if we get to, if we get a call that says, hey, by the way, this isn't done or this, whatever, we can go back and look at the list and say, okay, well, that's – so Scott checked that off. So at the time it was, but, you know, or maybe the checkbox wasn't checked. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. So I got that idea. So I'm currently going for my private pilot's license uh, where so I can I can fly planes around uh, uh -huh. and I get that idea from them. So everything when you're flying a plane, everything is a checklist. You know, when you start the thing, when you get going, when you take off, when you climb, when you, yeah. it's all a checklist because in your mind, there's so many things going. You just got to check them off. And that's kind of where the idea came from. But, it's pretty cool. I don't know. We're we'll see. We'll see. Like I said, it's it's something that we're to, we're in the middle of right now. It, literally yesterday afternoon we had that meeting, so we'll see. Sean O'Sullivan says worldwide heroes from rugby. Okay, there's some of these comments that I'm not going to understand, but we're still going to read them because you get. Them. <laughs> we'll try. <laughs> I skipped over this, Donnie. Oh man, Danny. Boys, how would you pronounce the last name here? Hoagie, hoagie. Okay. Yeah. okay. That's the way, the way it looks, I'd say. It. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, you never know because sometimes words that come out of my mouth just don't sound right elsewhere. The boys, D and J. That's right. That's right. QA Library says, Hi, all. How is the supply situation going? Are you having issues getting a hold of concrete and wood? Guys, what do you think? Yeah, massively at the minute. The concrete supply. <laughs> last time we spoke it was all good now it's it's really taking its toll okay really its toll wood wood's increased so much it's increased again every time we have a lorry load the price has gone up yeah, yeah. Uh, and as for the cement the concrete the uh, bag form so we have it in a 20 kilo bag we're just struggling to get it even yeah. The amounts we used to buy, we just cannot get it. So we're down to our last few pallets. Oof. So, and then probably it, they're just back ordered. They're just saying it's not available and we'll let you know when it is. Yeah, that's, that's, they, they don't even get that. They've said basically you you can have it when we've got it. <laughs> There's some shortage or something. Yeah. IPC or something. IPC or something. Some of it goes in the cement. Yeah, one of the components. Shortage. Yeah, some of the, the product that goes in it. So let me ask, and this has probably already been a discussion you guys have had, but so you guys make your own concrete there from component parts. Yeah. Could you could you bag it prior to water being mixed? No. Probably, <laughs> yeah, not, no. probably not worth yeah. the, the hassle. Mess. Everything that it would yeah. be, it would not be cost effective to yeah. do it. It'd, it'd yeah. probably be better to not have it Just, than to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. So we're, we're kind of in a similar, but well, actually, so concrete, we're not, we're not right now. We have a plant here, here in our town that makes the bagged concrete for basically our entire region of the United States. So we've got pretty ready access to that. Wood on the other hand is still incredibly difficult. You know, it's, yeah. and, it, and it comes and goes, which is the confusing part. So I called up, 
Wednesday or Thursday to get current pricing, and they had they had a lot. They had thirty or forty thousand boards on hand. I said, "Well, okay, that's why." I said, "I don't need any right now. We've got quite a few on hand." And they said, "Well, just you might want to take them because next week we could be out, and we don't know when we're going to get another load." Mm. And it, it so it's so yeah. up and down that you almost have to take them when they're available. Definitely the same heel. Definitely the same. It see that's the wild part of this is that you know we're half a world away roughly, and like everyone's in the same situation. Yeah. Typically, you'll see typically you'll see it in different parts of the world at different times, uh, but we're all kind of going through it at exactly the same time. We are yeah. indeed, yeah. It's it's actually it's crazy. There's, there's no two ways about it. It's crazy. Yeah, it absolutely is. So. I know we talked about it before, but we've probably got some new users. When you guys are, are making your panels, what what type of lumber are you using? Yeah. What was it? It's, what's you? Well, what is that? I said it. I forgot now. It's not pine. It's hey. Yeah. What that's would the, we use? Ask the real boss. Got to ask the boss. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's because she buys everything. I'm on site a lot yeah. now. <laughs> I, hey, I I understand this completely. What would we get in at the minute? Spruce? Spruce. Okay. Spruce. Spruce. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We yep. the real boss finds it, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so we had I had Spruce. a situation like this. Spruce. Spruce. I, it was. I forgot. <laughs> Mind blank. Just went. <laughs> Spruce. Definitely, yeah, Spruce. That's what happens when your head's in the work, right? Yeah. We, I had a situation like this. We were up like at this training event in Nebraska, and someone's I forget what the question was, but someone was asking me where we sourced this one particular part. Mm. I don't know. I said, but <laughs> I've got I, I had a few folks with me and I said, let's ask them. They'll know. Like that's I don't know. That's not my that's not what I do. So I understand the I understand that for sure. So spruce, and we talked about last time that you guys it's pre-stained when you guys get it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Just to take that thing out of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice looking board. It really is. All right. Let's get back to the comments. Oh, I apologize for not asking this question yet. Any news on the swans? <laughs> well, well, uh, right. Well, basically, you'll have to stick around for Sunday's video. Okay. Uh, what we will reveal. But very good. Let's just say that the swans have been there this week. Yeah. But Let's just say there's somewhat, someone or something else occupying the nest at the moment. We'll just okay. say that. All right. I will be tuning in tomorrow because I think I'm, I'm going off memory here. I believe on Wednesday they weren't there. On Wednesday they had swum off uh, for mm -hmm. a little bit. Now, some of the eggs are in the water or in the lean. Yeah. 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 Good grief. You true. think How did they get there, you think? Well, a lot of the comments are saying that they – the swans can sort of almost tell when they're infertile and they're actually not producing. So what they what the comments are saying, not that we know or have Googled, but they're saying that the swans will actually kick them out of the nest if they're actually no good. Yeah. Uh, but there was a bit of a magic hack. Something there was, <laughs> yeah. there, there was no egg one day, and then the next day we went, literally not even twelve hours later, and there was the biggest egg in the middle of the nest. So we don't know what happened there, but um, <laughs> that was crazy. That one, but. Uh, <laughs> we'll just say there's there's something happening on that nest at the moment. So we need to tune in tomorrow to see what's going on with the nest. 100%. Good news. <laughs> it's good news. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. Good news. Uh, so without getting into the video, there's one signet. Is that right? As of right now in the videos, there's one signet. We <laughs> we haven't seen that signet in a long, long time. So oh, okay. We, we we've only seen the swans once in say one one or two weeks time we've not really seen them i don't okay. know what what they're actually up to but there was definitely one signet yeah. um, but who knows now nah. you just who knows we haven't seen it in a while okay I had some swimming lessons one day and gone yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's that's for what i remember yeah i was swimming around with dad for a little bit and then, yeah, and then they, were, they were gone that was it went off for adventures yes that, we'll, we'll hope for the best that he's off having adventures somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Seeing all of the UK, yeah. Think positive. <laughs> Maxwell Grass Cutting Service says crack, crack, or great crack. All the best from Newcastle. Hope the tune. <laughs> so, so great crack. Can we? What does that mean? I, mean, so, I assume it's like, yeah, like 
great crack as in you can say crack as in a good laugh. Okay, yeah, but, okay. Um, for now. But there's different variations all over England. So I'm yeah, because one that, that means the same thing as what we're thinking in our head. <laughs> well, that, the one phrase I hear is like crack on, and that means yeah, just on, yeah. get, just get on get with it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's confusing. It's confusing. So there you go. Yeah, crack, <laughs> crack on, and great crack. Two totally different things. Same word. Same word. Yeah. Oh, good grief. I'm we. I'm sure we had the same thing here. Where if someone yeah, said something, I'd know exactly what they mean, and you guys would be, yeah. What in the world? <sighs> Jacob Harvey says, "Hi guys, hope you're well." We are well. We are, we are well. He's always about as well. I always see that Ash Tree Care. Uh, what's it say? I always recognize that logo anyway. Yeah, Ash Tree Care. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Gary Harding says, "Hello, mate." I mentioned two great channels. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Well, he said two great guys. I was like, "Yep, these are the guys. <laughs> that's the ones." Well done on passing your test. No, thank you. Honestly, it really does mean a lot. There was a, obviously there was a hell of a lot of comments on YouTube, a lot of lot of Instagram DMs of people just wishing me well, telling me I'll smash it. I'll I've got this in the bag, and it really, really did help. Don't get me wrong. There was a bit of pressure when you tell nearly 20,000 people that you've got your test on this day <laughs> at this time. I had a bit of pressure on my back. That's but, uh, right. I knew that I could do it. Um, and like I said on a video before, I was really trying to pass this for myself, for my dad, d &J, but I was really trying to pass it for the YouTube as well, for the guys, the, the family on the YouTube. I wanted to make them proud as well. It sounds crazy. No, but, uh, yeah. It's actually true. And all so, that support really did mean a lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So what's the process on, on getting that endorsement? What Obviously, it looked like there's a lot of classwork and then some probably practical driving. So what it is then, so from start to finish, you've got to obviously pay for the course. So once you've done that, Wicked, you can start going ahead. And then the first thing that you've got to do is pass a theory test, um, which is 100 questions. And you've got to get 80, I believe it is 80 questions right out of the 100 in, within an hour and a half's timing. Um, and that's done on the computer. And then you go straight into a hazard and perception part of the test, where that's basically videos of scenarios. It's pretending that you are driving that lorry and that wagon. Mm. You're driving down the road, say there's a few kids playing football on the field and the ball gets loose. You have to click a mask to say that it's a hazard approaching or something like that. Or if a car pulls out, you have to click a mask. Okay. You can't overclick because if you overclick, you get marked down and you have to score a percentage out of that. So let's say you pass them too. And then there's two added ones for CPC. So you have to do module two and module four. And you have to have those qualifications to be able to drive professionally so that you can be marked on how many hours you've driven throughout the day because you can only do so many. Sure. And again, one of them is question based on a computer. Second one is walking around the wagon, and an instructor will ask you, "How do you check the tire tread, uh, uh, tread depth on this vehicle? Uh, how do you lock all the doors? How do you stop immigration if you're at the ports?" And you have to answer certain questions and get them correct. And then it basically comes down to the test, um, as in driving wise, where you do four days driver training, and then you have the test on the fifth day. So it's, it's quite a lot to take in. It's not yeah. like just a quick five-minute thing because, as you already know, these are really, really big wagons. Like They hold a lot of weight. These these can be killing machines, so you have to be yeah. competent and confident when you're driving that wagon so they don't just let anyone just jump in it in the next day. So obviously, yeah. is a Which process. is a good idea. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I fully agree with everything that I've had to do. Yeah. yeah. So how long of a process is it, Steve? How long have you been at this? Couple months. You can you could probably do you could probably do it quicker, but with the pandemic, yeah, it has slowed things down. Like I say, you, you got it for your birthday present, didn't you? Yeah, and you couldn't do anything because of the pandemic. But if you did a fast course, I bet you could get it done within a month, yeah. two months. Yeah. I'd say a month would be perfect because the driving only takes one week. So you've got four days of driver training, one day yeah. of test, and if you can get, it's all about availability. If you can get your theory. Hazard and Perception Module 2 and 4, all booked within that month. Wicked, there's no saying that you can't do it in that month. It's Good. all about just being having space at the test centre for those modules. And yeah. on 
theory test. Uh, and then driver, driver training and test, that's, that's the thing that can hold you up because you can't just get in next week. It's, it's yeah. weeks in advance. Say if driving a car in England at the minute if, for the youngsters, if you want to do your, your tests, you wake in, you're waiting like two, three months in advance. It's not how it was when I did it where I could get a test next week and if I failed yeah. out, I can get a test the week after. Yeah. A lot of people are having to wait a good few months now. There's someone at uh, Big J Jizzle at our place. He's, yeah. his top, he's ready. He's ready to drive. He's taking lessons every single week. But his test is all the way in September. So even though oh, he's wow. confident and he can he can drive right now, he's had to he booked his test say two months ago. But that was the earliest he could get it in like late September. That's how crazy it is for cars at the minute in England. Wow. So, guys, what's the what's the age to have your license to drive just a regular passenger car? Seventeen. So you can be sixteen to drive a moped, um, okay. a bike up to one hundred and twenty-five cc. But then once you hit seventeen, that's when you can officially drive, as in if no. provisional and then pass your test. Yeah, yeah. So, so here in the states, so well, when I got my license a few years ago, uh, it was sixteen. Uh, so you could you could go right down. You could start. Well, you'd have a learner's permit at 15, which means you could drive with a licensed adult. Now, I believe when I got mine, it was anyone with a proper license. I didn't have to be an adult. So, but now, you know, enough kids yeah. drove around with other kids and had accidents that I believe now it's 18 for your full for your full passenger Ooh. license. And you can drive with an adult, which is anyone over 21 with the valid license at, I believe it is still 16, 16 or 17. Yeah. Uh, which is probably for the better. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I understand. I was a kid once that couldn't <laughs> wait to drive and get out of my parents' house. And I get it. But, uh, but as a parent, I, I would rather, I would rather them wait, yeah. you know, yeah. a little bit more experience, a little bit, you know, I don't uh, as you get older, they're right in that age range where you're starting to make questionable decisions sometimes, you know? So yeah, I, I agree guys. Let me ask you. So, uh, truck versus wagon versus <laughs> lorry. Uh, not, all I know is we're not allowed. I'm not allowed to call it a van. Not, <laughs> oh, that's right, man. <laughs> I will get ridiculed in the comments. Uh, yeah. That's just second nature to me, but now I'm, I'm sticking to wagon. I okay. just go. I go with wagon all the time. Even my dad said van today. So I know. <laughs> uh -oh. correcting myself. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, wagon because the the trucker community in the comments, oh, they do not like saying van. <laughs> <Right. So, laughs> uh, they're not happy with that. Uh, yeah. Well, so then, what's a lorry then? Same thing. Same. Okay. Thing. Okay. Same yeah. Thing. Same word or different word for the same thing. It's just that English thing where we've got so many different words, some different uh, spell, but yeah. it means the exact same thing. Yeah. So the the vehicle you drove for your test, so you you, you had the picture with your certificate in front of the Minions vehicle. Yeah, the Minions. Tremendous amount of lights on that vehicle. Yeah. They had all the lights. Is that common or not common? Uh, I don't. You don't have to have that many. You definitely don't have to have that many. You just need to have your working lights, side lights, main beam, all that sort of stuff. But yeah. it's what they call it again. They have them on minis and stuff. The big circle spotlights. lights. Spotlights. Yeah, I think they're just classed as spotlights. You like as an accessory, but you don't have to have them. That's just a bit overkill. Um, yeah. But I don't know why they had so many on that one, but there was a lot of lights. There wasn't a lot of lights because I had to check <laughs> every one every day. So I know there was a oh, lot of lights. Good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so part of your training is it nighttime training or dusk dawn training? No, so it was it's literally what time I was starting at twelve in the afternoon and finishing around about four. So I was doing around about four hours worth of driving and it was light all the time. I don't I, I don't know if they do do that. I don't um, think they do. I, I don't know if they do. They can do on a car. They do like advanced car. training to do okay. night lessons and motorway uh, lessons, but. I've, because you because when you're doing that HGV test and driver training, you've already got a driver's license. They know you can already drive. They don't mm. need to then take you out on the road at nighttime because chances are 
you've been doing it for years already. Yeah. Well, and, and I'd have to think that those vehicles are mostly on the road during the day anyway. Some, there's quite a lot of nighttime driving with that sort of wagon. Okay. Yeah, okay. A, lot, a lot of nighttime um, driving with that. Going up and down the country when it's a little bit quieter, you can get to places uh, a bit faster. Makes um, sense. But, uh, but, yeah. Very good. Very good. All right, let's get back to the comments. Jack Daniel says, DNJ, huge fan of yours. Thank you. Agreed. Jack. Jordy Scanlad says, I respect the passion, lads. Love from Belfast. Keep up the hard work. Oh, we will do. I'm fine. You, you know, and so one thing you guys are, get so right is when I, so I'll, I'll talk to groups of people sometimes and one th about making video. And I say, you, you should start creating video because right. it helps document your process and things like that. But one thing I say, though, is, but only get into it if whatever you're talking about that you have passion. Yeah. Yeah. That's that you're it, passionate yeah. about. Um, because, I mean, there's, again, we talked about this last time, but there's days where you just don't want to make a video. Of course. And, 100%. But if you've got the passion, then you still do it. So. Yeah. 100%. There's no point doing something that you're not enjoying. That's right. That's right. Yeah. If, if, What's the saying? It's if you love what you do, if you love, if you love your work, you'll, uh, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life or That's something, like, that. something to that effect. All right. Roger Bittencourt is here. Very good. <laughs> here listening and working. Welcome Roger. We've got Roger. <laughs> Rick Lang with Steve and Alex. Oh. Part-time fencers in the house. That's it. Ah. They've actually got a good channel as well. Yeah, so if yeah. anyone wants to check their channel out, I was going to say, well, another pair of, of tradesmen that we'll need to yeah. catch up with. That's it. They are the good lads. Yeah. Jordy says, random question. Dislocated my knee getting into my work van last week. What is the strangest injury you have sustained doing day to day stuff? Wait until you see next Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're back. We, uh, we, we almost didn't make this video today. We'll just say that. It was that bad. It was that bad. But uh, <laughs> it was. Oh. I don't want to give too much away, but. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll say prior to that. Prior to that. Uh, what's, what's, what's happened? Yeah. Uh, more cuts and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's definitely cuts on hands and yeah. with it with the being the concrete and obviously when you're dropping a post into the hole, we should wear gloves all the time, but sometimes sure. you don't. And you yeah. drop that post into that hole, and your your hands are like this, uh -huh. and the post will slide down, and our hands are beat up all the time. There's cuts everywhere because it just <laughs> absolutely slices you. Yeah. Um, but I can't think of anything. I'm not. I don't think I've ever fell over or anything like that. Um, yeah. Other than that, dad hit me on the head with a grab today, but not much. Don't give it, don't give it away. Don't give Wednesday away. Oh, that, keep that's nothing. In comparison. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, honestly, it was, uh, it, it, it could have been a lot worse. We'll say that. So Go probably on. my most senseless injury. There have been a few, uh, so on the back of my truck, I have a, a trailer hitch, right? Sticks out the back of the bumper. Oh. I don't know what I was doing. I was on a mission. I was walking very fast, and I was—I probably had my head in my phone, if I'm guessing. Ooh. And I just smashed my shin right on that trailer hitch. I had to go get stitches Ooh. just because it was just it. right. Yeah. yeah. I felt so silly. They're like, well, what'd you do? I don't want to talk about it. We just need to get this fixed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. Good question, Jordy. Good question. Keep them coming. Good. Yeah, that yeah. Good. I, like, I like them sort of questions. They're cool. Yeah, they make you think, right? And, yeah. and and talk about things you wouldn't normally talk about. Danny's got a question. I'm a joiner, or he just has a statement. I'm a joiner, and the price of timber has gone mad. Isn't That's that the truth? So crazy, absolutely crazy it can't sustain itself forever like that you would think anyway it can't it, it absolutely it's not sustainable you know when so for us we don't use wood post any longer but a year and a half ago a, a four by four by eight we pressure treated pine which is our uh, economy Ooh. which is a nice way of saying that uh board cost about seven dollars fifty cents uh today 
they're about fourteen dollars and twenty cents. So yeah, not quite twice. Price. Yeah, that's it's, it's crazy. It's pretty much the exact same over here. It's For price comparison. It's if you almost say pretty much most things have almost doubled. It's gone, yeah. and that just sounds crazy in itself. And and we're not even saying doubled from ten years ago. We're saying doubled from last year. Like yeah. it's mad. Well, and, and the crazy thing is, too, it's that way for everything. Mm. So, and, and like I was saying it earlier, it's it's weird to see all these different parts of the world have the same thing at the same time. But it's also that it's each item we carry. Yeah. Whether it's wood pickets or steel bolts or aluminum tie wires, whatever it is, you can just bet on that it's doubled in the last yeah. year, year and a half. It's it isn't sustainable. It can't be. Well, I, I think we just answered this one. Brick Yay says, "What's materials like like your way on lads?" Struggling, yeah, struggling. Getting by. Don't get me wrong, but sure. Trying times. Yeah, trying times. <laughs> trying yeah. times. The the yeah. only silver lining here that I can find is that everyone's facing it. Yeah. Right, so it's not just us; it's us yeah. and those in our town that also do this. That's it. Right? The competitors so. are feeding it as well. Yeah, so. yeah. So it doesn't make it better, but it it that's the silver lining is that everyone's having to find a way to deal with it. Scott Smith has a quick question: Attaching a custom four foot tall panel to the inside of four by four post, toe in screws, or use angle brackets or clips, or combination of these. All right, attaching a custom four foot tall panel to an angle to the inside of four by four posts. Okay, uh, so, what, so what I would do is have a, a, um, a framed panel, and yeah. then I've not got to worry about yeah. anything like that, and I can just screw straight into the post myself. Yep. Yep. Um, I've, I've used some clips before and brackets, um, and I didn't get on with them myself. Not to say that they're not perfect and they work for everyone, but the particular yep. clip that I was using did not work the way that I wanted it to work. And it didn't save me no time. So I just stick to frame panels when yep. I'm using timber posts. Well, so, so Scott, if, if you're here in the States, so, so when we, when we build a panel in the States, we build them a little bit differently. We'll just have three, two before cross runners and then the pickets face nailed onto those. In that, in that scenario, probably the angle brackets, I would, if I was doing this, toe-in toe -in screws I'm not a fan of. Um, and, and there's people in my comments that like to talk about this. Uh, we reviewed a video a little while back of a guy that used a, uh, it was a deck system called Camo, which basically, yeah. you know, the, the screws go in at 45-degree angles through the board. And the argument is it holds better because it's at an angle and it's not head on. Uh, I'm, I'm just not a fan of it. Uh, it. It could be the best method in the world, mm. but if you're asking me, yeah, I don't, I would use brackets, but I understand the argument against brackets is they're pretty unsightly. They just don't, they just don't look nice. It's a shiny yeah. metal piece against a natural looking wood fence. Yeah. Yeah, so you're in a bit of a jam. I don't like them for that particular reason. Yeah, yeah. I well, mean, they it, might work perfect. You can sure. put a batten down, can't yeah. you? You put a batten down your post, screw the batten to the post, and then the panel to the batten. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, another absolutely. method. We need to we need to get on with full like building building panels the way you guys do the full frame panels because that's another that's another we thing you guys do extremely. Right. We do the like. With the picket style you're doing, we call it camp rail. So we do do that. Okay. As well. um, okay. But because obviously the concrete is quite not everyone likes the concrete. Look at the gravel boards. Um, we probably do that more, and then yeah. it just makes sense to have a panel already made, and then it saves all that time. You just put the panel on, put the post in, and you're ready yeah. to go to the next one. Well, that's the thing. So the pre-made panels make make sense on a lot of levels. One consistency. Every panel is just like the next. You're not having to relearn how to make panels. But two, you can make those panels throughout the year. Mm -hmm. you know, doesn't depend on the weather. Doesn't depend yeah. on anything. You know, you, if yeah. it's pouring down rain, you can make those panels. That's it. And with the right kit and the right gear, we'll make a six by six panel in less than two minutes. So we, <laughs> we can make panel out all the time. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, so. yeah, that machine, we, we talked a good deal about that machine last time, but that machine is, is amazing to watch work. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great bit of kit. But even before that yeah. panel master, even just with a table, a few, say, 2B1 battens with uh, markings on them, and if you've just got one nail gun, you can still make it in two minutes. It's true. Sure. It's just if you plan ahead with that a bit more, but obviously then it's a bit more back breaking over time. Yeah. Like I moaned about it so many times so dad had to buy that panel master. <laughs> <laughs> but but it is it is good. And in the video, actually, so in the video that we're we're gonna watch today, answer answer the question about you know varying terrain, you know, sloped mm -hmm. yards. Because on one of those gravel boards, you had to dig in a little bit to get yeah. that gravel board level. Yeah, that yeah. that's usually the argument. When we're talking about pre-built panels here in the States, that's usually the argument, is that they're great for flat yards, uh, but for yards with slopes and terrain, they're really just not great because you have to stair-step. Yeah. Your step it's all down. about the steps. If you can get your steps to be roughly even throughout the whole yeah. drop of the garden, wicked. Yeah. It Sometimes it just look a bit unsightly if you have to go, say, a two-foot drop to a six-inch drop to another – one foot drop obviously it's all out of uniform but if you can sort of plan a little bit use a bit of your brain and realize how much you need to drop each time then they can look great or in the video that you're obviously about to have a look at as well this customer didn't want no drop so but their garden dropped so we had to customize and use extra gravel boards where needed to get that super plumb line yeah so uh a longer post like my dad says obviously because if yeah we're using an eight foot post for a six foot total fence Obviously, if it goes to seven foot, we then go to a nine foot post yep. or a ten foot post, and so on. Well, and and the nice thing is, since you guys manufacture them, you have access to the variety of sizes, yeah, and the variety of lengths. And that's uh, where that, the quality control comes again because we're not picking up a panel or a post from a different company. We already get to, we know that our quality is good, so we get to see yep. that quality all the time. We haven't got to worry about rubbish panels or um bowed posts and stuff like that well and and it probably makes it a little bit nicer on your production side to have that feedback from the installation side right mm. to say hey guys we've noticed on a few of these panels yeah you know this or this let's tighten it up you know something like that it gives you a little bit better feedback too yeah because yeah. Yeah, if if it's if we're getting those panels from someone else we can't really do nothing about it but uh right. if, if a few sneak through in our production side and I'll make those panels as well. Then I know for a fact, right, I need to tighten up the game and make sure that they're coming out perfect again. That's right. That's right. Do you guys – Do you guys have well, – how do I want to say this? So we sell materials here. So you sell to other trades, as do we. Sometimes we catch um, – sometimes people complain that we also install, right? So say, well, you know, I'm, I'm feeding my competition or something to that effect – or that it's not fair that we're competing with them on the installation side and selling the materials. My my argument is, would be the other side of that, that since we install, it gives us better insight on the materials we provide. Right. Would yeah. do you guys do you guys have those conversations about you know that that on the retail side versus the installation side? No, I don't, I don't think anyone's ever, not since I've been there, I don't think I've ever heard anyone moan that we install and supply. I think, if anything, people would probably moan that we don't install enough. Like, we mm -hmm. can't do this. We, they want us to do this, but we can't do this um, yeah. more than anything. Um, I'd, I've never heard that myself. Dad might have, he's been doing it for a lot longer we've passed, than me. We've but, passed jobs on to him as well. So yeah. if we can't do it, we recommend yeah. people use our stuff yeah, and we see they're good installers. We will recommend them to our customers. If we can't do it, and then we provide a name yeah. of a, or a company which they can, and we can rely on them. Hmm. So we, we all work together. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, and, and we'll do the same. You know, we'll tell the customer, say, you know, this isn't a project that that we can take on at this point, but we know that these guys they do quality work and they buy their materials from here. So you would be still getting the same material, but just a different contractor installing it. Uh, I mean, that makes sense. And it makes sense to our customers too. You know, they appreciate that, of course. Yeah. Harvey Long says, hi, everyone. What's up, Harvey? Hello, Harvey. Oh, no. Danny, if you give stuff away, 
It says the Ducks have robbed it. <laughs> Danny, I'm telling you, if you give this away, I'm going to be upset. Mark Davidson, hi, guys. How are you all doing? And congrats on Stevie on passing his HGV test. Thank you very much, Mark. That means a lot. Thank you. Yeah, Harvey follows it up with a well done, Stevie. <laughs> Thank you. Daniel also says, well done, Stevie, from Red Rose Builders. Oh, man, I'm going to give this one a try, guys. <laughs> Wolverhampton. Bang on. Bang that on sounds, the money. That sounds good to me. I'm All you. right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, very good, very good. Ben Cresswell says, congratulations on passing your HGV. Well, honestly, thank you to everyone that's saying it. It does mean a lot. Yeah, absolutely. So, so, Stevie, what's that mean? I mean, obviously, it means you get to drive the grab, hmm. but – does that change things, David? Does that change things like in your organization that that Stevie now has his license? Massively, it it releases me. Yeah, it, it, it's now nah, instead of me turning a grab down because I, I can't physically do it, Stevie can take the reins now and he can do it, which in turn means I can concentrate on other aspects of the business. Yeah, and can, yeah. and stop on jobs longer, uh, man, self-manage lads and, and help everyone else. So, yeah, it's it's a massive relief. You know what I mean? It, it, I was the only one that could drive it. Now nah, there's two of us. So it shares the burden. It's yeah. not the burden, is it? It's, it just no, shares, that's, shares, that's the shares the workload. Yeah, that's right. And that's what I was going to say. It takes a bit of weight off your shoulders. Yeah. yeah not not that's that that's right. negative. That weight's not a negative thing. It just it helps to share that load, yeah. And on um, obviously with that, obviously because it can, it's a full time job in itself, but there's not always enough hours in the yeah. day. So obviously with yeah. those wagons, you can't drive too many hours in a day. So if Dad's yeah. done his driving hours for the day, but it's still one more grab, I can jump on that grab and get that grab done sure. because it's a different driver. Um, but obviously, for all of the listeners and the and the uh, the people out there subscribe to us, don't worry though, because I'll still be doing a few fences and that. So uh, <laughs> I'm a big fan of fencing as well. So that ain't getting me on that grab all the time. I like it. <laughs> yeah, it seems like you guys. It seems like you guys are still, you know, kind of taking on a variety of projects, right? Or at least in the videos, you know, you went, you had the the paver, the nice arbor. Yeah, I mean, still some fence videos, a little bit of everything, really. That's that's it. So obviously, we do fences, as you know. That's like bread and butter for us. But then. My dad does do a few hard landscaping jobs throughout the year. He sort yeah. of advertises it at the beginning of the year. They all get booked up straight away. So, and I know everyone's ringing the office right now asking for landscaping. <laughs> and all this, but we don't do as many no more. Um, yeah. So I will say they are fully booked up, unfortunately. Sure. Can't, sure. can't do everyone's. We'd love to. Of course we would. Yeah. But, um, but So obviously now we're doing YouTube as well. It just makes sense yeah. to film everything. Um, and sort of flip flip between the week. Um, some people want to see fences. Some people like the grab. Some people like the landscaping. And obviously, we film all week, so it just makes sense to put them all in together. Make sure that the video flows, and then everyone can see a bit of what they like as well. Absolutely. I tell you what. So the Yellowstone you guys used, gosh, that's been a few weeks ago. That stone was so nice. Is that is that common? Is it the slabs? There's yellow slabs. No. Or the, yeah. Do you mean the actual decorative stone, or do you mean the slabs? Uh, sl probably slabs. So it was the one where they were having uh, water issues up close to the house. Yeah, it means oh, the slabs. Yeah. <laughs> They're not to, our favorite. To be fair, oh, Joe, okay. not, not, it's um, <laughs> economy. That, that, that's usual. It's an uh, economy uh, slab. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, I got you. I got you. They, they, they look. They, they make a nice area. They do make a nice yeah. area. Yeah. 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 Obviously, it all goes on as well. The installation, if if they're installed terrible, then they look terrible. Yeah. But if they're yeah. if they're installed right to the right levels with the right eco drain and everything like that, then they can look nice. But yeah. they're not. My, I've I've not used them often, but my dad says they're not very nice to use because they they break too easy as yeah. well. Yeah. Gotcha. And, and that gets back oh, to no, the no, economy. No. Of course, water. So that's lava later. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, I'm learning a little. I'm learning a good bit about hardscapes too. About the uh, hmm. the how you properly lay the slab under, or not the uh, yeah. what do you call the underlayment? The, the 
the cement and stuff. Yeah. 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 The proper, you don't do the castle. Like, I yeah. understand that. You got to do it nice. <laughs> I'm bed. learning things. Bed, I'll probably yeah. never use it, but one day, if I'm somewhere, I'll look at it and go, oh, well, that's castle, and that just won't do. <laughs> dot and dab. Dot and dab's the other one. Dab and dab. That's right. Yep. That, that one won't do either. Uh-uh. <laughs> Uh oh, BNP Paving Nottingham says, "What's it like being the second best looking landscapers in Nottingham?" <laughs> uh oh, I'll uh -oh. take that. Yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> we, we, we work together. We work together. So Nick at BP Paving does the paving, and we do the fencing for him. <laughs> so oh, yeah. perfect. Yeah, so yeah. he he chucks work our way. So, so <laughs> that's a conversation we have a lot with various guests is the fact that, you know, I really think we need to get away from, from this thought that competitors aren't meant to be friendly, sure. right? That we can all help each other out. You know, if, oh, if I have a need for something, I would, I would like to have resources here near me yeah, that, yeah. that can take care of that and Absolutely. vice versa. Yeah. And like, like we said from the beginning, anyway, um, our only competition is ourselves. We're, yeah. we're not bothered about what anyone else is doing. There's sure. loads and loads and loads of money out there for everyone to be happy, yeah. make a nice living. And we're only bothered about what we're doing, 100%. That's always the truth with that. Yeah. Um, we're, we're our own competition. But the likes of BMP Paving, we're, so, we're, we're, we're not even nowhere near competitors. They do their own thing, all driveways and that, make a lovely job. But when they need a fence, they give us a call. Oh, very good. Very good. It's good. Like I said, it's good to have resources like that. Mm -hmm. All right, Harvey says class one is next. Yeah, that's that's so yeah, there they are. Yeah, we're the royal family, aren't we? From <laughs> yeah, <so. laughs> Kenny Dugan, greetings from Texas. Welcome, Kenny. So, so Kenny's got it, got the channel called Stain Man. But so, Kenny does a lot, or well, primarily so fence cleaning. Restaining, restoration, yeah. that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Yeah, if yeah. you want to talk about chemical composition of anything, you just talk to Kenny because he's got this figured out. I don't know if he's like technically like a uh, a chemist, like a doctor <laughs> chemist, uh, but he probably should be. He probably should be. <laughs> Welcome, Kenny. I appreciate you joining us. I appreciate some folks from the states piping in. There's plenty of people <laughs> from the UK. Hey, Oh man, this name! I'm not gonna try that name. What do you guys I, think Harry's last name is? I think that's. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think that is an official like name. Thing. Yeah, who knows? Oh, but, uh, but uh, you ain't got to wait long. Twelve o'clock tomorrow. 12, Harry, 12. it's not long. Yeah, about a day. About a day. I've got, well, I say twelve got tomorrow. I've got to actually upload it. I ain't even uploaded it yet. So <laughs> I've got to sort that out after this. Our, all right, guys, we cannot take this video long. We need to get this video <laughs> off on time so, so we can get yeah. tomorrow's video. We've got priorities here. I thought it was already done. I was about to say yeah, it's we've, already done. We've, we've edited it. We're not yeah, everything's it. edited. Yeah, everything's done, but uploaded well, still, I want to see tomorrow's video, so I will make sure this is on time. <laughs> on the England, there's an England football match happening at 8 o'clock tonight, so I'm, I don't know where I'm going to find time. But uh... uh Oh, <laughs> well, that's in an hour, right? Uh, three, uh, hours. Five, three hours. Three hours. Three hours. Okay. We're all good. We're all good. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Gotcha. We're all good. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Sean King says, "What's up, guys from Hawaii?" Hawaii. Yeah. So Sean's over in Hawaii. Uh, they're building some fence. He's yeah. working with a company over there that builds fence. Uh, yeah, and they're building a bunch of vinyl fence PVC. Oh, all right. Course. Listen. Vinyl guys, do not come at me for saying it's PVC. I get it, but I'm trying to. Yeah. Vinyl vinyl installers get very particular about what you call their particular material. I get it. Rick Laban and Stephen Alex says fuel is getting ridiculous very gradually over in the UK too. We we talked about that last video. I think so. It's yeah. High now at the minute. Yeah. I think there was well, something in the paper today saying it's a. a a high, a biggest high in 18 months or something about the fuel. Right. Um, it's gone up, definitely. 
So I noticed yesterday I had to get some diesel in the truck, uh, in my truck, and it jumped. So usually, so our price, obviously in gallons, is two ninety nine. Typically two ninety nine, two eighty nine, two ninety nine. It was three twenty five yesterday. Mm. So it jumped, jumped to twenty five cents a gallon. So you know, yeah, uh, almost a dollar a liter. Yeah. yeah. I don't think we've had. Uh, no, we, I would right. don't definitely don't jump like that for us. It might. It's a pence, two pence, but it it keeps creeping up. Yeah. It just, it's not one big jump. It just keeps just going up and up and up and up. Yeah, they hope you don't notice. Yeah. Say so a little bit at a time. Yeah, until one day you f you full up and you say, it was how much? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is not right. Craig, your mother says, everyone hit the like button. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for that. Good on you, Craig. Good on you. Appreciate it, for sure. I see. Oh, well, okay. Sean King says again. What's up, guys? All right. All right. Scott says, thanks for the tips. You're welcome, Scott. No worries. Concrete posts and gravel boards have been a staple since the 80s in the UK. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's a lot of fences up for uh, that you see that you can tell they're old, but they've yeah. got the concrete, they've got the concrete gravel boards. So it's been around for a long time. Well, and that's that's the beauty of this system, right? Is that so the wood will eventually need replacing, but if done correctly, the post and the gravel board should be fine. Yeah. So it's, it's simply sliding out the pre built panel and sliding in the new and moving on. Yeah, actually, you guys have a video on that. Mm, yeah, a couple, yeah. <laughs> For just such a thing, check out DJ Projects. Dan says we stick build. I can't imagine having it. Having to set my post exact every time to accommodate a pre-built panel, especially with the roots and une uneven ground we have in yeah. southeast Louisiana, the fence king. I mean, that's a fair point. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's how do you guys handle that? So, you know, the post has to go where the post goes, right? To to accommodate the the six foot panel. So, what happens when there's when there's a uh, you know a load of roots and some thick rock that you hit about a foot down? What hap What then? You battle like mad. Yeah, you get it. <laughs> yeah. 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 We we said it once, we'll say it again. We don't fail here at D and J. We get through. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but if if we're being real, yeah. we can make a panel to any size needed. So if we have to move six inches to to not hit something. We can do that, or we can plan ahead. If if we know we're running down the side of a garden and there is a massive oak tree in the way, we're sort of going to try and plan for that the best we can. Yep. So we, if we're hitting a load of roots, we sort of we're, we already know why we're going to hit those roots. So we'll try and accommodate for it. If we're if we're replacing a fence, we can also start with a seven foot panel to miss every concrete post. So yeah. we don't hit the old concrete. We can saw it off at the ground, not worry about it, get them out if we can. There's always sort of a way, but again, referring back to having the right tools at the right time, there's always a way to get through. Yeah. One thing I've noticed, you guys you guys carry the the uh, jackhammer. It seems like on just about every project, you guys have it available. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> and then you get too cocky and you don't take it for one because <laughs> you only see two holes and you think you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> and you wish when you're spending half an hour trying to dig the thing out by hand, that's when you wish you brought it to that job. So yeah. if you brought it, take it. That's the best thing. It's better yeah. to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Bingo. Yeah, we, we talk about that here a lot. Is that even if you think you don't need the tool, I would rather it be on the truck than be in our tool crib yeah. because like you can't use it in the tool crib. That's it. I've done that twice now, and trust me, I regret. Every, I regret them both. I will not be doing that a third time. No, it, it takes a couple minutes to load and a couple minutes to unload. <laughs> Crazy. All right. Richard Rushton says, Afternoon, Stevie and Dave. Recently subscribed to your channel. Love the content and is inspiring me along the way to do stuff in my property. No, that's wicked. That's, that's what we want. That's what we want. That is exactly what we want. Um, we'll help as, as much or as little as we can. Like, we can't always help. Yeah. We, we, we don't know what you're doing in the property either. Um, but... We'll always try and help. We're like we say, we're here to help as much as we can. I, I think that guys, I think that's a pretty common thing, right? For guys that are that have YouTube channels, I think that's why we do it. Right. <laughs> it, most everyone I talk to, that's why you do it, is to for comments just like this, 
to know that you had an impact and you helped somebody along the way. That's yeah, it. That's and the motivation. We always say as well, we're very active on Instagram. So if you have questions, if you're not going to, if we can't get to you on YouTube, ask on Instagram because it comes straight through to our phones. And if I can't yeah. answer, my dad will. There'll always be someone to answer on that sort of platform. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Scott Smith sent a $3 super sticker. Scott, thank, thank you. you. Much appreciated. I appreciate that a lot. That that might be our first super sticker now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> now, would you guys say like big ups? Is that the con? That's the yeah, thing? yeah. Big ups, big ups. <laughs> all right, all right. Daniel Singh, I, I hope I didn't butcher that. Daniel, thanks for reading out my comment. Will you get a new wagon? That's a good question. I think yeah, it's going to be in the foreseeable future, but. Yeah. At the minute, I think you're just going to get to grips with this one, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Now, is it, are, are wagons hard to come by right now? Uh, <laughs> I have been looking, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I've yeah. been looking at a bigger one. Um, you can always get one. You can always you can get always one, get. but I'm, I'm holding that for the right spec. You're right. Yeah. So, the reason I asked, so right now we need to add a couple, at least one truck to our fleet. We're trying to grow. And the problem is, so the trucks we use are pretty particular, four-door cabin chassis, so we can put a flatbed on them. Uh, I looked, so we prefer Ram trucks just so that the fleet matches. There is one within a 90-mile radius of us right now. There's one. And you better believe that it is priced accordingly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it so this same truck we bought two years we bought one two years ago and the truck was forty five to forty seven thousand dollars. That same truck right now, because there's one of them, sixty three thousand dollars. Yeah. Same truck. It's supplying yeah. the yeah. three and art one as a shop for the roof. Yeah, if yeah. we saw sort of got the same here. If you want a transit tipper, we call them. Yeah. And then, then you have to pay the price that yeah, they, they've, they've gone up. They're they are not cheap, but they're so they're so good for the tipping aspect. If you want just a normal van that doesn't tip, you can get one of them. But if you want the tipper version of that van, you, you got to pay for it. You'll pay for it. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? So I think we talked about this last time, about the, the wagon, about what we're going to call this new wagon. Because <laughs> we got Big Red. We got to think about red. something to call the new one, yeah. Someone said mighty red, didn't mighty they? Red. Was mighty yeah, red. Yeah, that's it. I was just, I was trying to think of that. Bigger yeah, bigger red. <laughs> bigger I think red. It will be red as well. If it doesn't come red, I think it will be sprayed red. Yeah. And Absolutely. It stands out like a sore thumb from a mile away. Yeah. I'm a I'm a huge fan of that, obviously. Like I like color branding because yeah. here's the thing. So you so you buy you buy a white car. All of a sudden, all you see is white cars. Because yeah. you're looking for it. Right, you say, "Oh my goodness!" Now all the cars are white. Well, they were always white, but now you're looking for it. If it sticks out, you see it. You know, all of our vehicles are orange, bright orange. Actually, so <laughs> we've got one done. We've got one in the shop right now, orange chrome. Orange chrome. I went on your Facebook. <laughs> <in that book. laughs> Man, <laughs> that thing it gets all the comments. Yeah, yeah I can believe. <laughs> yeah, it's now some of them are not. Are, are not happy about it because it it reflects light obviously so sometimes it might shine across somebody's eyes and then they get mad about it and they send us an email <laughs> my point is what they're talking about yeah you, yeah you knew who you knew whose truck it was yeah. you knew who to email about that truck uh, <laughs> tom says shout out page landscapes okay big shout out, big shout out page very landscapes. good I agree with this. Doug says, love your videos, dad and son from North Carolina. You guys make a great team. Oh, thank you. Cheers, Doug. Appreciate Absolutely. Doug. All the way from over North Carolina. It's just, it is, it's crazy to us that people are like from I that way watching just me and my dad from Nottingham in England. It's, like, it's crazy. But, uh, I, I agree. Well, no. it's like 10 years ago, this would have never happened. Yeah. Right. I would have never met you guys. I would have never found your content. I would have been stuck in, you know, in my little area here in Missouri. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy. And, it is. And it is. So guys, if you haven't, if you, if you guys are watching, 
and you haven't watched DNJ's videos, their page is linked in the description below. If you're watching this on YouTube, highly recommend it. Not right now. Give it a little bit. But <laughs> once we're done talking here, you go over there. And I'm going to yeah. give you guys an example here in a little bit of their videos. It's very well done. Very well done. Jamal says, shout out Nottingham. That's it. We love Nottingham. Jason says, tell the boys it's coming home. <laughs> it's coming home. We'll it's be his. watching, mate. 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. <laughs> UK time. We will be watching. Do you not worry? Vince King says, hello. Hello from across the pond in southern Louisiana. Fence on, fellas. Fence on, fellas. I like that. Fence like on, fellas. <laughs> I, I do, too. Dan's good at coming up with these. Dan's good at coming up with these for sure. Sean's saying hello again for all the way from Hawaii. It's early. It's so early. He said this like two or three times. Hello, Sean. Hello. <laughs> yeah, it's, what time is it? It's it's very early in the morning. It's not more. 6 or 7 a.m., something like that. It's very early in the morning. Ooh. Robert says, when's the new equipment coming to the yard? Can't wait to see it. Rob from Tate Fencing. You can answer this one. Don't I? It, I've rang him again. It's coming the end of this month, but I've still got to have it specced up as well. So it's definitely going to be later, later, probably 28th or something like that yeah. at the end of this month. We're, we are so ready. Yeah. Because, um, the JCB man had to come out again this week and it's not, ain't cheap. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm sure my dad cannot wait to get that uh, the new machine. Yeah. yeah, the answer is as soon as possible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So we've got uh what do you call I apologize, guys. I'm not I'm a fence guy, I'm not a YouTube guy, but you can do a, a highlighted comment. And so we've got a highlighted comment from Salty Racer. He tell me if you sell the gravel boards and fence panels in the US anywhere. We we get this a lot, so, I've been yeah. we get a lot of Americans asking us saying, Do you know anyone that supplies the, the, the materials that we obviously not necessarily from us, but that sort yeah. of style material, and obviously we don't. We have I, we didn't even know that the Americans didn't even use that style. So um, honestly, if we could help, we really, really would. Like it, it's, it cost us an absolute fortune to send you some as well. So uh, <laughs> we've oh, got yeah, <laughs> yeah, it would it would be two or three times the cost of the materials just to ship it. I bet. But you, you would have uh, you would have quite a nice fence, though. <laughs> a proper built fence. Yeah. yeah. Uh, All right. So um, this says uh, this kind of reinforces to niche, me that bro. this is your niche. You need. Yeah, to, we need to figure this out. Yeah, we need to figure this out. Yeah. So we're what well, we get a lot of call for. So we use a steel post, and we get a lot of call for it. People want us to ship them, and the problem is they're eight foot long, and anything over eight foot. There's a significant charge to ship these. You have to ship them freight instead of standard. Um, so we could figure it out. But even if we made them here, so we're in southwest Missouri, even if we made them here, we probably wouldn't ship them. I mean, well, the weight alone yeah. would be That's incredibly expensive. But no. So Salty Racer, I apologize. I'm not sure where you get them in the U.S. Um, but okay. Follow up. I don't know, so I it. <laughs> Salty Racers gonna, wanting to invest, making them here in Florida. So let's do this. Salty Racer, why don't you email me? Uh, <laughs> because we need to figure, I need to figure out. So concrete machine, right? The the pre-mixing machine, but also the forms are are the, the big. It's the, the yeah, the, the forms and the molds are, are the key to all of this. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. You can make concrete. You can make concrete. Batch concrete and a not small mixer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's the formwork. It's the formwork. So obviously, it's the the mold itself you need, and right. then you pull up your way. That's it. It's so easy. But like my my dad and mum didn't didn't start with that. It looks good with that big volumetric mixer now, but yeah, it, you could do it with a, just a bog standard mixer that would take mm -hmm. one bag of cement sort of thing. Like mm -hmm. that's all you need, but it's the mold. It's the yeah. mold making that cast. Yeah, the mold's a key for sure. Yeah. Key to everything. Sure. So, Salty, why don't you email me and we'll kind of put our efforts together here because try to research who sells those molds here in the states. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure someone does, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they're out there. It's just a matter of getting them here in the states. 
Uh, let's combine our efforts and try to get that figured out. Absolutely. Let me catch up. So that's a good example, I guess. So if you do a highlighted comment, it pops up on my screen, and then we answer that one, and then we go back to the other comments. So if you want your comment to be seen first, maybe you do that. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Oh, we are. We just answered that. Thomas asks, lads, are you Forest fans? <laughs> uh, I'm not really a, a football fan, but if I was going to support a team, yeah, it would be Forest. Steve is a bit plastic. <laughs> I know I'm going to get some hate for this. Uh -oh. <laughs> See, I like Forest. I like the new Forest football kit as well that they've just released. But I'm, I actually support Manchester United. Um, but from the beginning, I've not changed ever since, bro. I'm having a bit of a dry spell at the minute. So, but it has been my, I'm going to get some hate for this. I know. <laughs> you can count on it. You can count uh, on that. Oh, yeah, I'll get some hate. It gets hate from me anyway. So I'll say it's past me all day long. <laughs> <laughs> so, speaking of Manchester, Gail says we need a DJ up in Manchester. Uh, being a woman, it's hard to find a company that won't rip you off. Mm. Yeah, um, honestly, we always say, honestly, if we could help, yeah, of course would. we would. Uh, yeah. And uh, we, yeah, we do recommend companies, but only in our surrounding areas. And yeah, do you guys have uh, do you guys yeah. have industry organizations for fencing? I don't think we do. No, I don't think we do. Gotcha. That's no. usually so. I'll get this question, you know. So I'm in the middle of the United States, and I'll get questions from people from different parts of the United States saying. Hey, who do you recommend here or there? And I don't know anyone there, no. right? Yeah. You know, in New York, I, I know no one in New York. But and so typically that's what I'll do is I'll refer them to our industry organization for the states, the American Fence yeah. Association. Um, yeah, that's a hard thing. If, if you don't have that to kind of lean back on. No, nothing like that really. No. Either, like just one big team that's all over the place doing it sort of thing. We, we never yeah. have don't really have anything out. Maybe that's us, that's for us to start something like that. <laughs> it, really? So the training I went to up in Nebraska was a, a American Fence Association training. It was an on the road fence installation school, and you know it. It was it was a really good experience. And this one was talking about chain link fence, the the chain link fence side of things. Uh, and not that I haven't installed chain link fence. Right? I've installed. That's that's predominantly what I installed as a kid. Uh, but it's always good to brush up, yeah. you know, and and meet different people from different areas of the United States that have different tips and tricks. But so in in all your guys' spare time, you should probably look into that. That's it, yeah, all that time. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Higginson says D and J are nothing but amazing. A plus service and attitude towards customers. Stephen from Hucknall. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, okay. good. Getting better, getting better. Thank you. Yeah, no, uh, we, that's a nice comment. We appreciate that. And obviously, yeah, I know we pride ourselves on that. But um, no, thank you for that. Appreciate that. It's, it's good to see that reinforcement sometimes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, right. of course. It's, it's, it's always nice to hear something nice, ain't it? So, uh, it, it is. So well, because it. sometimes <laughs> sometimes it's the greasy or greasy, yeah. the squeaky wheel that you hear. Yeah. You know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease and all that. But sometimes that's all you hear. You know, so yeah, it's it's good to hear, good to hear good comments. Okay. No, he's nice. And he's 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 close to us as well, so that's always a bonus. Absolutely. So this is interesting. QA Library says, not sure if everyone knows that U.S. gallons are smaller than U.K. Imperial gallons, three point seven eight five four one liters versus four point five four six zero nine liters. I did not know that. So no. And I we're all liters over here, so uh, yeah. we don't know nothing about from the gallons and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, so the the conversion, so interesting. So it's three point seven eight five four one. I'd always heard three point nine, so that's all. I'm obviously wrong on that. Um, gallons to the okay. Well, so our our gasoline conversation the other day probably wasn't accurate when we were trying to convert what it would be dollars to the, yeah, to the yeah. leader here. Good to know. Jamal says, are you guys from Nottingham or have you moved into Nottingham? No, we've always been Nottingham. Yeah. Always. Always, yeah. Both grew up in Nottingham and then mom and dad started the business in Nottingham. 
Yeah, so nothing them all the way. Very good. Uh, Brick Lang with Steve and Alex. Our local hire shop does a post puller. Looks mint. Post puller. Is that more getting posts out of the ground? Yeah, we've got a grab. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So actually, this is we 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 videoed this vi we shot this video this week uh, on how we pull posts. Right? It's a it's a question we get a lot. Mm. So the thing about the grab though is, so say you're in what was it last week's video that was barely wide enough to yep. get the the powered barrow through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What in that scenario? Like, how do you how do you guys how do you guys get those? Uh, post out of the ground in that kind of scenario where the grab can't get to it a lot of hard work no lie obviously hard work hard hard manual labor mm -hmm. having the right tools again it means so much trying to it there's no point trying to break something with a toffee hammer you may as well have the right tool um but we also have something else it's called a farm jack um, okay. yeah we've not actually shown that on any video yet so maybe that's one for the future um and it's it's like a ratchet sort of thing, yeah. ain't it? It ratchets it the post, and it just every click pulls the post higher and higher and higher. It's yep. got to have the right connection on it so it doesn't slip up the post. But maybe that's a video that will show um, in the future, probably soon as well. Yeah. Uh, hard to get them out, but again, going back to it, just just a bit of hard manual labor. You you'll always yeah. get it out. You just take a little bit of effort. Yep, absolutely. So that. Yeah, and, and that's that's the that's the basic answer that applies everywhere, right? Like you can get a post out of the ground. How much labor is it? Yeah, usually yeah. a lot. Yeah. Usually a lot. Now, one thing that I haven't seen in your guys' videos, so I don't know if they're common in the UK, but we call them mini mini skids. Um, I'm not sure even how to explain this. So, do you got uh, caterpillar skid steers? Is is that a piece of equipment there? Yeah, you're are you talking about the smaller one? Yeah, the walk yeah, behind. I've seen them where, where you you walk behind it, don't you? And you mm. put all different attachments on it. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're not very common over here. Okay, I, I have seen them like a Kangool or Kangool or, mm. but they, you're quite popular over where you are, aren't they? Yeah, everyone has them. Yeah, they, they make predominantly is for digging, so yeah. they'll make an auger attachment that will just you know it in the right soil. We'll, just, we'll really get through it. Um, when we're pulling a post, typically we'll have forks. And so we'll put the fork attachments on, put a chain, pull it up. And then yeah. because then the machine also then just walks it to the truck. Mm -hmm. um, makes it a good bit easier, you know. But so we showed that. We showed uh, there's a dolly, a two-wheel dolly that we bought at a trade show. It's just been probably three or four years ago. Um, that has that has a farm jack on it. Uh, we'll... A lot of so here we call it either a farm jack or a high lift jack. Yeah. I learned that one in the comments in one of my videos. Uh, but so it's but it's on a dolly, so it's in the middle of the dolly. So when when you get this post out of the ground, it's already on the two wheel dolly. So yeah. then you just dolly it up over to the trailer. Pretty smart looking thing. All right. Uh oh, Thomas wants to know score predictions for tonight's game. Hundred percent two nil. It's we are not losing this game. We <laughs> beat the big guns last time. The, we'll, we'll win this game yeah. 100%. There's no way we're losing this game. 100%. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. And this is not gambling advice. Here in the States, like that's a thing. <laughs> this is not gambling advice. We no, don't promote not, gambling. No, I'm not promoting it. <laughs> this is only for uh, entertainment purposes. Yes. <laughs> Stevie and Dave, as I'm from the UK, this question is more aimed at yourselves. Do you have any tips for post and rail fencing covered with feather edge? So uh, camp rail fencing. Would you say camp rail? Yeah, but there's lots of tips, tips. But what's <laughs> um, simple ones. Make sure you post a level. Don't put your post too far apart. If you can have a rail that's 4.8 meters long, have a post in the middle as well. Don't just use one rail for the full distance. Uh, space it out, uh, just make sure that it feels strong and go deep enough for your posts. It's, uh, it, it, giving tips for something like that, you've not seen the job, you know nothing about it. Yeah. It's quite hard. Just common sense says make sure your spaces it's, are nice. Yeah. You can make a spacer for that style of fencing as well. Mm. I, I, 
I make a spacer, so I, prob I probably should show that in a video. Yeah. Next time we do one, I'll show it in the video. It's a, little, it's a simple little trick. You can make a space and it'll save you no end of time. Yeah, that's to get your feather edge the same distance every single time because yeah. obviously rather than guessing it by eye, that makes a, uh, a nice space. Or just to, So you whip that on the end of the feather edge, next feather edge goes in and it, you just keep on repeating. It's a, it's a good tip. Definitely, it's a, it's a video in the future of that one. There you go. That, that's a great thing about these Q and A's is is you go back and you watch them again and you you write down all the that's ideas it. for videos. It's content. Yeah, is it well, and it's the best content, right? Because it's content that people are requesting that people yeah. want to see. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So let's talk about real quick post spacing. So it, it seems that a common post spacing for you guys is six foot. Yeah, six foot on concrete. Yeah. Six yeah. foot on concrete. A little bit wider when we're using the camp rail timber. Okay. And and that's where I was going with that is typically it's more of an it's a eight foot spacing on yeah. on our end, you know, and what yeah. you'd call yeah. camp rail. We do it eight foot or less, depending on layout. Yeah, we go around about eight foot because the four point eight meters is roughly around towards that sixteen foot mark. So we know yeah. we can go in the middle between the two posts at an even size as well. So it all works out. And then do you offset your joints so for, from top to middle to bottom rail? Sometimes, but at the same time, not not always either. Yeah. So um, just make everything nice and uniform. It also depends which way the feather edge is going to be faced against. It depends who's going to see yeah. what. If it's going in, if they're going to see it in their garden, we want it to not look nice and smart and uniform. But if it's just going to be up against a shrubbery that no one will ever see, doesn't yeah. matter as much. Um, mm. Makes sense. Makes sense. I don't know what this means, comrade. Comrade. Oh no, no, this is. I think this is when we're talking about names for the truck, for the for oh. a new red grab, <laughs> comrade. Ah, okay. Comrade. <laughs> Kenny Dugan says, "Big Red or Clifford." So we've got big red, but we're not bigger red. Yeah, Maybe bigger red. Too. I I still like that mighty red. Yeah. Yeah. That's got a nice ring to it. Uh, Tom Fortune says, DNJ, check out Page Landscapes on Instagram. We would love your feedback. Page Landscapes. We will. We'll do indeed. We will. Uh, let's see. Joe Swartz says, uh, Stevie, <laughs> could you please lower the music in the videos for us headphone users? Yeah. I've watched all your videos and like every one of them. I will do my absolute best, <laughs> but I will say this. There's, the only people that ever moan about the music are people using headphones. <laughs> it's always the same. And I'm not just saying that from me either. There's some big yeah. million, million subscriber YouTube channels that keep saying the same thing as well, that the headphone users are going to be moaning about the music. So I will try my best. We appreciate you watching and liking every single video. Honestly, we really do. But I, I will try my best. That's all I can really say. Because I don't, I can't hear it through your headphones. So I have no idea. If we turn it down anymore, yeah. we can't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I will try my best, Joe, yeah. honestly. Yeah. There you go. Jacob Harvey says, it's all about branding. Got to get your name out there. 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So now it's a sports question for me. Joe, are you a Chiefs fan? Yes, I am. Cut and dry. Yes, is the answer. <laughs> yeah. So we actually all right. So so tomorrow's our independence day. And Ooh. so we, we fire oh, off yeah. all the fireworks. July the fourth, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So we had <laughs> there was a firework last night that that we shot off that was called what was it called? Chiefs Kingdom, which is what they call the fan base for the Chiefs. Uh, but it was called, uh, what was it called? Raider Killer or something like that. So Raiders are like a big, you yeah, know, Raiders, yeah. a, a big deal. So I thought that was interesting. But the funny thing is when you shot it off, it was kind of a normal firework. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't. <laughs> so Chiefs, Chiefs colors are red. Like that's it. It's just red. Uh, but there wasn't like an overwhelming amount of red. I expected a lot of red in the firework. So, which made me wonder, do they sell the same thing in Pittsburgh for the Steelers and they call it the Chiefs killer? Ooh. I'm thinking probably yes. <laughs> Come on. 
T Norton, D and J, when will you be uploading next? The the schedule is always the same without fail, most of the time. You never because you never know. But it is 12 p.m. So midday on Sundays and Wednesdays. We will try and stick to those times yeah. every single time. Unless YouTube is doing its thing and it just don't, doesn't want to upload. I can't really do it about that, but it's 12 on Sundays and Wednesdays. Yeah, that's so frustrating, right? When your upload gets almost all the way done and yeah. then, you know, it'll say it'll give you an error and go all the way back. Yeah. yeah. It, it just spent half an hour uploading this thing, 45 yeah. minutes to upload yeah. this, and I started over again. Uh, Jamal says on the videos, I can tell where your yard is because the mm, knots yeah. ends well. Knots as well. Oh, yeah. So knots as well. well. Yeah. Oh. So that, um, Stevie, Steve, did you go to Blue Coat School? I didn't go to Blue Coat School. I went to Gedlin Comprehensive School. Um, but I know where Blue Coat School is. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Concerc distributor says great info guys all the way from philly pennsylvania philadelphia very good i bet philadelphia is going to have an incredible independence day celebration they typically do thomas king says lads when's when's the merch out are you nottingham forest fans we've answered the forest fans when's the merch coming out we're working on it we literally are working on it it's we, we, we want it to be right. We've got yeah. someone. We've we've got someone that's doing stuff for us, um, and we've sent him ideas of a certain look, say, yeah. um, in certain different areas. Uh, so we're just waiting for a reply back as of yet. So, and as soon as we know, we'll let everyone know. Like, there's nothing to hide or anything like that. And obviously, we would like it out as well. Um, it's just. And the same with everything when it comes to our jobs. We don't want to rush everything. We want we, don't, we want everything we do to be perfect. Same as the YouTube videos. They take yeah. a day and a year and everything to edit them, but we want them to be perfect. So yeah. that's why it's taking a little bit longer than we thought it would. It's a process, right? It just doesn't – you just don't come up with it tomorrow. That's it. I, I am also patiently waiting for D&J merch. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. Divine Fence says, hello from Massachusetts and happy 4th. Happy 4th to you. We use a stand and a chain that pulls quick and easy with leverage and the two-wheel Oz puller on cemented posts. Okay. So the leverage the leverage, is, the leverage with the chain makes sense. I'd be interested to hear more about what the Oz puller is, um, two-wheel Oz puller, because it sounds similar to what – so the one we used – it was eco. It was called like an eco puller or something like that. Uh, but when I went to look it up, so we we shot the video, and then I was going to put a link to it in the description because without without fail, if I post a video about something, everyone wants to know where to get it. Yeah. So and they'll email. All right, they'll email my company asking where to get it. Well, my company doesn't know where to get it. They don't, you know, it, the email fills up pretty quick. So. For that reason, we now have a, sh a YouTube yeah. email. Yeah. So it, uh, but anyway, but it was called Eco Polar. But when I went to go look it up, it wasn't there. And it, it went to a, a site that was in Chinese. So mm -hmm. they're not around anymore. So maybe it's the same thing, Oz Polar. We'll have to look it up. All right. This is a question that I have. No Connor wants to know what are your thoughts on Changi? Changi, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like Chang. Yeah. I like Chang. I like we started watching his two brothers first. So this is a YouTuber, by the way, Joe. Okay. This, okay. Um, I I was patiently waiting on to be filled <laughs> in on who Chingy was. It's a bricklayer. This is a guy that okay. uh, passed okay. basically. Um, okay. I like him. Yeah. Like his brothers as well, Scott and Dean. Good lads. All Very good. good. Lads. Very good. good so brothers. they have a YouTube channel, you say? Yeah, all but the two brothers and then Changi, they all have a YouTube channel. The the good, good laugh or a good laugh, they are funny. <laughs> Stoke stoves. Yeah, I'll, we'll give a shout out as well. Stoke stoves and property maintenance. If you haven't watched them, give them a try. Really, do some great work, and they're funny guys as well. And then and of Chani, course, Chani's, Chani. got, Chani's got his own. He's just Chani. Just Changi. Okay, Stokes stoves and property maintenance. That's the one. Yeah, and Changi. Yeah, Changi. 
do some work as yeah, well. Yeah, they do. I, I enjoy watching that, right? It, it I enjoy tradesmen that are just that excel at their trade. Yeah. I, I really enjoy watching that. And because it's it's like so it's like me watching your hardscapes. I probably yeah. won't ever do hardscapes, but I enjoy watching true craftsmen perform their trade. That's it. And we don't mind telling people who we watch either. Because like we say, we're not yeah. we're not we're not bothered about competition or anything like that. Is no. is always enough for everyone. We'll yeah. always do that. <laughs> Well, so I, I got enough comments about what channels I watch and subscribe to that actually on my YouTube page, if you guys go to my YouTube page, there's uh, there's a oh a page on my YouTube page or yeah. that says pages that I follow. Yeah, yeah. And you can check it out there. You So DNJ Project's link is in the description, but it's also on that page. So you yeah, can well, thank you. Straight yeah. over. Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, you're welcome. I mean, you guys are the ones creating this content. I just watch it. It's uh, yeah, it's great stuff. QA library. Oh, this is a great question. So, where do you get your music from, and how do you stop being dinged by DMCA's, etc.? So, obviously, there's all different variations of where you can get your music from, but a lot of the time, I use something on YouTube called NCS. So, it's called No Copyright Sounds, um, and it is absolutely amazing for that. You have to. Give credit to where the music has come from. Of course, yeah. that's not a problem at all. Yeah. Um, but they are really, really, really good for non-copyrighted music. You're not going to be finding Eminem and all yeah. of the mainstream stuff like that. Of course, you're not. Yeah. But um, yeah, just people that are after a break, um, trying to be seen, trying to be fine. To art. There's absolutely and there's and thousands do, and thousands. And of don't things. get pulled, does it? Yeah, we've, we've tried. Pulled, yeah. We've tried other ones and of course we all want the mainstream music. Of course we do, right? But uh you upload it, it does it takes six hours to upload, and then lo and behold, you have a copyright again, claim against yeah. them, you have to take it down. So yeah, we don't we don't bother with that sort of stuff now. So um we just stick to NCS. Um, yeah, NCS totally different ones, but uh that one works. And YouTube us. audio library as yeah. well is also a good one. That's yep. always a great. Yeah, so so basically the the answer is there's several sources. What you're looking for is royalty free music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and there's some that are subscriptions. There are some that are free, and you know, teach their own on that. Right, um, we're still yeah. learning because um, we shot an absolute awesome drone footage. <sighs> used some an amazing music, changed every every clip to the sound of the beat, uploaded it, and then found out I had a copyright claim. So <laughs> we had to. Uh, to take that down and rush it through on a different song. So we're still learning yeah. at the same time. Yeah. So we're not professionals on that yet. Well, in DMCA, it, it's a very real thing. So oh, we had so. a video get taken down for a DMCA claim. And uh, it's, yeah, it's very, it's very real. So music royalty free. If simply, if you Google royalty free music, you, you know, yeah. throw in YouTube or something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. And if you're just starting, definitely try the YouTube audio library because it's yeah. right there at your hands. And there's, there's thousands as well. Um, yeah. You might not look get exactly what you're after, but there's a lot of different choices on there. Well, and since it's since it's offered by YouTube, so sometimes what will happen is you'll upload. So you'll download music from a royalty-free sure. site. You'll upload it to your video. You'll still get a copyright ding. So they'll say this music appears or this video yeah. appears to include music that is copyrighted. And you say, well, I've, and, and then you have to appeal that. Yeah. So to say, no, no, I downloaded it from this site, royalty free, and then they'll allow it. Well, sometimes that can take a few days to get yeah. it through. By using YouTube's music library, you, you, won't, you don't get dinged yeah, on you're it. Yeah, absolutely fine. Yeah. It's a good place to start. I agree with Richard on this one. Those guys are legends at their trade. Thank you. No, thank you for that. Jacob says mini skids are very popular in the UK, ARB industry, in the Arbor industry, maybe. Good to know. It's not about the big ones, I think. Adam French says buffering. Yeah. YouTube buffers forever. I think this is when we're talking about uploads. Oh, hello, Adam. <laughs> Hi. Um, Jamal says, are you guys hoping for goose? Goose Fair to go ahead this year. You know what? I'm, I'm never really bothered about Goose Fair. 
in my later years. I like Riverside Festival. If he knows what Riverside Festival is, I was more gutted that that was cancelled than I will be about Goose Fear. It's it's a big and it's a big attraction that comes around once a year, Joe. For just for okay. it sounds weird, Goose Fear, but it, it's just yeah. an attraction that comes around with loads of different rides. But it's the biggest one in Nottingham every year. So uh, okay, it's just the biggest one in Europe. Oh, biggest one in it's Europe. Biggest one in so, Europe. Oh wow! I think. I think um, then hold me to that. <laughs> I think it is. Yeah. yeah. But to the question, I prefer Riverside Festival. If you know what that is, Jamal. Very good. Very good. And, and you heard it here first. Kyle says, when will we be seeing Stevie Boy in the driver's seat of that grab? <laughs> Wednesday's video. Wednesday's video. <laughs> Stay tuned on Wednesday. Midday Wednesday. Oh, we talked about this one. When will you tell your truck arrive? Not soon enough. Yeah, let's yeah. say month's time. At, yeah. Month's time at least. <laughs> All right. JP wants to know, where did you get your haircut? <laughs> Are you... Are you just some backstreet barber. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm assuming from we get our air cut from JP, so you would assume this is Josh. JP. Yeah, yeah so, Josh, uh, our main man, Josh, main man, Josh. He hooks he up every with, time yeah. without fail. I ain't normally got this fringe, would I? <laughs> 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 no, he's, he's the man, he's the man. Yeah, all right. So, Connor wants to know can DJ, can we get a preview of dad's sleeve if okay with dad? <laughs> tattoo? It's a tattoo, isn't it? Ah. Some good work. It still needs it's time, Joe. I, I see you've got some good sleeves. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wrong hand. Yeah. Good, yeah, it's time. It it's is. Time. So I wish, I wish you could just cut your arm off, <laughs> drop yeah. it off, yeah. come back in a few hours and pick it up and it'll be done. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a few days later, they ring you up, they say, Hey, it's ready. You're like, oh, okay, yeah. good deal. <laughs> Yeah, because it is. It, it's a lot of time just sitting, just sitting there, and it's not super enjoyable, right? Like it's not fun, but it's worth it. So I've got one that I still, I still have to complete mine. So I've got Jackson for my son. And I've got Macy for my daughter, and then some some mandala, some fill in there. Well, so I've got three kids though. So I, I had a daughter six months ago, and she's going here, yeah. and then it's going to complete the sleeve. I am not looking forward to this. That one's <laughs> it, cool. That is it, cool. It'll, it won't be great, but but it will be worth it. It will be worth it. That's it. Um, I, I, we, we probably answered this, but <laughs> waiting for it to arrive still. More are you getting us? <laughs> <laughs> Jamal wants to know what cars do you guys drive? Uh, at the minute, well, my little blingo. I drive, I drive my van more than my car. I've got a BMW 330i. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's but, a sharp car. G20 yeah, yeah, it's a G20 version. So yeah. For myself, I am in a Seat Leon Cupra. Okay, very good. And if you care to know about me, I would drive a Ram 2500 pickup truck. That's, <laughs> hey, that's why Mum drives a pickup truck, though, as well. So a Ford Ranger. Ford yeah, she drives a Ranger. I saw that in one of the videos. She's not she happy about that, but she, she drives it. She drives a Ranger. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> and no one drives a BM. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this question comes up. Andy wants to know how old are you, Dave? LOL. It's that easy to find that is. I didn't obviously just go on the uh, company's house. Yeah. <laughs> which, a lot, which a lot of people <laughs> did. A lot of people <laughs> did, yeah. So it's, uh, that's been answered. Yeah. <laughs> There's some high guesses and some low guesses. But, uh... <laughs> it, it it does seem to be a topic for discussion fairly often. <laughs> big What's mystery, that? big mystery. All right, well, let's do this. So we're almost two hours in, and we're an hour and fifty in. So let's watch. Let's watch a video. And I figured out, I'm figuring this YouTube thing out as we go, right? But I figured out how to, how to get this on. Okay, now we can all watch it together. So, guys, what this is, is I did a reaction video to DNJ's video because I do reaction videos to a lot of other channels, and I was like, you know what? I need to get. I do enough videos from folks I don't know. 
I need to do some videos of, from some guys I know that do good work. So that's what this is. So let me navigate over. And if you guys want to pause and talk about something, just let me know. We can certainly do that. Here we go. I can't hear anything, Jeff. He can. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, it fences, ain't it? Mm. Is it up? Is it turned on? Mm. You sure? Should we not muted that? No. No. Can you guys hear it okay? No. No, Jack. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Can so it's faint. Yeah, it's it? very, very faint. Very faint. Okay. Hmm. How do we solve this problem? Okay, so guys in the comments, if you'll let me know if, well, I mean, if you guys, if it's faint for you guys, it'll be faint for everyone. I mean, you can, can you guys, can you guys, Steve and Davey, hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear. Okay, it, but it was faint. Oh, okay. I know what's going on. I think I still have to do the microphone trick. We put a microphone over here. All right, let's try it again. And guys and girls of YouTube, welcome. Yeah, that's all, brother. It's a nice okay. sunny day. Beautiful day. What we're going to do today is we're going to show you how to put one bare fencing off from start to finish. All the tools you need from post creed the last. So I'm just going to run through them with you now. Basic tool, grafter. Pick these up from anywhere. Screw fix anywhere. All right, yes. Shovel. Post holes. You don't need post holes. You can do it with your hands, but these just make life easier and save you back. A standard level. Don't have to be anything expensive. A bar, just in case you're coming across anything tough. You can invest in the breaker. If you're thinking about setting up yourself and you're a trader, and you're thinking about doing it yourself with the pandemic and everything else, losing the jobs and that, you can just start off with one of these. But if you do hit some hard concrete, I suggest you buy one of them cheap electric breakers. You can always arrange a bit of power with the customer. Steel saw. Don't have to be a steel saw. Don't have to be a petrol saw. Now, this is where our uh, tools list differs a little bit. Uh, we don't typically send uh, send crews out with a concrete saw, but you'll see why this is one of their standard tools here in just a second. Also, it can be an electric angle grinder with a diamond blade on it. That's purely to cut a post down or grab a board because not every fence will finish on exactly one bay. Watering can for water. You know where to get these from, guys. Wilco's anywhere like that. <laughs> they might even have one in your shed, really. Bag of postcrete per hole. You don't have to use postcrete. You can have used ballast and cement, a four and one mix. One shovel of cement, four shovels of ballast. However you want to do it. We use postcrete because it goes off rapidly. So as soon as we've done that fence, we can walk away from it knowing full well that things ain't going to move. You know, one other benefit of using a bagged concrete uh, product is that you know that the concrete mix is consistent post to post. Uh, I think we've all, if you've built fence, we've all been on a crew that uh, had a guy mixing concrete that would sometimes be called inconsistent. Uh, you know, four shovels to one is a great ratio, but are they heaping shovels or are they light shovels? It can get inconsistent. Mm -hmm. uh, I like that they use bag of concrete mix because you know exactly what the concrete contents are going to be uh, from you know post hole one to post hole twelve, post hole twenty. One post, one gravel board, 
one panel. That's everything you need to put in one bay of fencing. Now we're going to talk you through it, from digging the hole to leveling, how we do it, and we'll give you some little tips along the way. First job is we want to find out exactly where that hole's going. So we use an old six foot level. He's battered. Now I'll pause this just to make note that David used an imperial measurement rather than a metric measurement. Uh, we, we have some videos uh, that we do review on specifically the uh, New Zealand reaction video um, that uh, a lot of the comments had to do with imperial versus metric measurements. Uh, in talking with David and Stevie in the live interview, uh, one thing we discussed is that they're taught both in school, they're taught metric and feet. Uh, six foot makes more sense rather than 1.9 meters. <laughs> so they use feet or imperial measurements in that case, uh, but they'll use metric for, you know, different measurements. So anyway, just interesting to see a uh, fencing professional outside the United States also using the imperial measurement. It won't level anything, but it's perfect for what we need. It's six foot long, so it's the same length as a gravel board. You can use a bit of wood cut off six foot. It's the same job. So put it into the slot. That's another interesting note that their posts are spaced six feet apart, uh, more or less on center. I mean, I know the channel, I'm sure there's still posts in between those two channels, and there has to be, obviously. So it's probably six foot three inch, six foot, four inch on center. Uh, but it's interesting to note, you know, when we're talking about a six foot tall wood fence here uh, in the States, probably across most of North America, I think you'd see uh, post spacings that are eight foot or less, depending on if you're using proportional, proportional remainder uh, techniques, but typically eight foot or less on center. Anyway, interesting to see that they do uh, six foot on center. Ultimately, it'll likely make for a stronger fence. So we obviously talked about that you know, just a little bit ago that when you're, uh, I've, I've already forgotten what your term for, for the stick building is, but you would do those on like an eight foot center, right? Yeah. Cut rail. Cut rail. Cut rail. That's right. I'm going to start writing this down. So I'll remember it. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and, and the bit about six, two or six, three really. So when we're talking about post spacing, we always refer to on center, right? Everyone wants to be very particular about where the post is centered on the measurement. Uh, so the point being just if that was six foot from the inside to inside, center to center is probably going to be a couple inches more maybe. Mm, that's it. Yeah, we have like a two-inch recess. Oh, yeah. two recess so an inch off side. That's what, yeah, that's what I was, that's what I was wondering. Hey. Mark, what's exactly where you want to dig that hole. Pull that out of the way. Grab your post holes. Bear in mind, everything that I've mentioned here, we sell in our shop. So if you are thinking about taking this up yourself, come down and see us and we'll fully kick you out. And we'll start digging the hole. I'll dig this hole and then we'll show you what the next process is. Hole's finished. Now you're going to ask me, how do I know that hole is the right depth? Well, Instead of getting your tape out every single time, we put bits of tape, insulation tape, on these at two foot. So when we that gets level with the ground, you know exactly that, that is two foot in the ground. So we talk about post depth uh, pretty much every video. Uh, so they're a 24 inch or two foot hole, which is probably fine. Depends on the frost area in your area or the frost line in your area. How deep does the ground freeze in a really hard winter? Uh, typically, you want at least six inches below that frost step to make sure that the frost heave doesn't occur, uh, which frost heave being when the ground underneath the post freezes can lift that post up out of the ground. Oh, so that's probably a good subject to talk about real quick, guys, is frost step. Do you guys, I'm not, I should be more familiar with your guys' area, but uh, when it comes to wintertime, do you guys have hard freezes? Not really. Not not to the extent that you guys probably have as well. Um, yep. Don't get me wrong, obviously, we get cold temperatures and obviously stuff freezes. Uh, but for, say, a lake to freeze or something like that over here, yep. that would probably be as very extreme. Uh, of course, we get snow and it does freeze. Sure. But at the same time, no way, no way near the minus temperatures that you guys will obviously get. Yeah. 
I had I had guessed that. So so we use a two foot depth as well, and I know I know we're going to get comments about that, and that's fine. We do a two foot post depth, and yeah. here in the states we've got the ASTM standards, which call for a post depth of thirty inches, and that is absolutely fine too. And when we're doing a commercial fence, we'll adhere to the ASTM standards, which are what that's made for. It's commercial projects, but uh, yeah, but so we're at twenty four inches depth as well. And I really think that's a minimum depth. If you don't have frost heave to worry about it, I feel like 24 yeah. inches is pretty is a pretty standard depth. Yeah, that's, that's plenty deep enough. That is at 24. Yeah. Especially with six foot centers, you know, Ooh, because yeah. you've got you've got more stability there anyway. I'm telling you guys. So the concrete post, and I think I might talk about this here in a minute, but I'll say it anyway. Uh, the concrete post at six foot centers, that's going to be an incredibly tough fence. You know, when we're talking about wind load, that sort of thing. That's it, yeah. All right, let's continue. Next stage, bring your road level or piece of wood, your decent level, and let's start leveling this ground up, ready for this gravel board. Shigging it out and checking, checking. That will save you a lot of backache. Lifting the gravel board, in, out, in, out. Shake it all about. <laughs> I'll level this off, and then we'll get to the next stage. Now, you may ask how you get to know exactly what depth you need to go. Basically, you get your tape. I didn't mention tape earlier. Easy forgot about any tape. Overall height of this fencing is going to be six foot. This is going to have two gravel boards high, but it's the same principle. So your panel's four foot. You strike a mark there. Okay. The gravel board is one foot. Same again. Strike a mark. And then that should leave the final foot there, which it does. If you've done this correctly and you've leveled it off. Let's talk about these posts for a second because we just got a really good look at one. Uh, so over in the UK, they build fence a little bit differently in that uh, predominantly they build fence with concrete posts. Now, when I first heard about the concept, I had a hard time wrapping my head around what a concrete post would look like. How do you attach a rail to a concrete post was kind of the first thing that my brain stumbled on. Uh, but as you've just seen, these posts are what we would call an H post. So they have a channel on either side. Uh, and talking with David and Stevie, they also make them uh, three-way, uh, that sort of thing. So if you've got a sideline fence or a neighbor's fence cutting off at a 90-degree angle, they have that as they can accommodate that as well. Uh, the concrete post, I think, is a phenomenal idea. Uh, for them, it's it's just normal everyday fence. But uh, for me here in North America, that's a bit odd, you know, to see a concrete post. But I love the concept. It's not going to rot, not going to warp or twist. It's essentially the same benefits of, say, a steel post. But uh, even though a steel post has the, depending on the manufacturer, I, I you know, I understand. Um, but typically, they'll have a lifetime warranty against rust and corrosion. But you have to think, you're going to rust and corrode at some point. So the concrete post is going to resist rot and insects won't rust or corrode. It also would have to be incredibly strong when we're talking about wind load rating, especially as they're building it six foot post spacings. I think it's an incredible idea. Uh, it's something that I'd probably like to play with here in the States. Uh, why don't you guys let me know in the comments below concrete post, yay or nay? Would you, uh, would you be willing to try it? How do you think uh, your local uh, clients or residents would react to seeing concrete post over a wood or a steel post? It's probable it should go straight in. So those of you guys that are watching, why don't you let me know? Like, I'd like to have that discussion, uh, you guys here in the States, on, on the concrete post. So, guys, on, on the post, obviously, obviously, so it's been done since the 80s, and your clients are used to seeing concrete posts. My, my concern, it's not really a concern, just my thought on it being they're going to look a bit unusual, right? Mm -hmm. in, in a market that's used to seeing timber posts or – or we'll use a steel post that's covered with a uh, fence picket. Can you, can you dye that concrete? I suppose 
to be like a like a brown color uh, yeah. before you put it in the forms? Yeah. 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 So that's a thought, right? That the gravel board uh, could be dyed brown, the post could be dyed brown to have, to give it more of a consistent and they look. Paint it as well, like they paint real easy as well. Okay. Okay. That's an interesting thought too. So, yeah. So when we when we'll pre-stain, so we don't have a supplier of pre-stained timber, pre-stained lumber. So we'll stain our own. So we have a dip tank that we use to, to dip all the pickets and such. You could probably, I mean, it would be it would be a different compound, obviously, but you could probably dip the post in the gravel boards too, once once they're you know once they're cured out. Yeah. Um, my my mum and dad's volumetric mixer has actually got set in for dyeing the concrete as well. Oh. So, okay, spec'd up. We well, could actually do it like as we have it now, but yeah. it's it's not as popular over here. Just the plain yeah. sort of white concrete is sort of like the normal. Yeah. Well, yeah, and that's the only reason I think about that is just people are so used to seeing timber posts here, where if you could make it look more like timber, it might be you know, more accepted. Um, Standing out from the crowd is always a good thing sometimes though, as well. Well, that's the truth. That is the truth of it too. We're not always got to follow everyone. We can, we can do our own thing. <laughs> Very true. Let's get these gravel boards in. Let's see if it works out right. There we have it. Gravel boards in. Straight in. See the mark. We'll be put in. Look at that. Perfect. You don't need to lift that in and out. Right, me and Steve's going to put the next one on top and then we'll show you how to put the panel on and where it needs to finish on the post. Second gravel board on, but don't forget, guys, you don't have to use two gravel boards. Same principle with one or two. Great. Exactly the same. Check the level. Absolutely perfect. Nice panel time. Let's talk about these gravel boards for a second as well. Uh, in the southern United States, you see you see fences installed with a kickboard at the bottom, which is usually a treated pine. Two so this is this is pretty common uh, in the southern United States, um, where so and I'll, I think I'm getting ready to talk about this in the video, but uh, where so this board is meant to be like a sacrificial layer uh, mm -hmm. between the rot at ground level and the the nicer pickets, the cedar materials up top. Um, but the problem with this is that board has to be replaced. You know, yeah. it's it's a sacrificial layer, so it's meant to be sacrificed, uh, which means someone has to go through and peel out all of those kickboards or the rot boards every, you know, five to seven years or something like that. Whereas the, the cement, do you guys see the gravel boards? Do you guys see much replacement needed with those? No, no. ever. Yeah. Unless unless it's been damaged by something else, sure. that, that's fine, but there's no reason why that gravel board should ever... If it's made correctly, yeah. there's no reason at all. Yeah, be yeah because they're reinforced, right? The gravel boards last longer than the posts. Yeah. We've, we've replaced posts, which are cracked and worn, but normally the gravel boards... You can reuse the gravel boards, and the customers have asked us to reuse them because sure. there's nothing wrong with them. Yeah, yeah, there there wouldn't be a, a great reason to replace them, really. Yeah. Uh, and they're reinforced, right? Just uh -huh. similar to the posts. Yep, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. So it's again, this it's this concept. It's the it's the rot board concept, but with a material that you're not going to have to replace. It's not a sacrificial layer. It's a barrier, right? It's yeah. a rot barrier by six or two by eight uh the idea being it's kind of the sacrificial part of this fence that uh, if it gets rotted before the rest of the fence it could easily be replaced without having to replace the entire fence uh these guys you know i say these guys in the uk the industry takes that to a different level by using these concrete gravel boards as they call them we'll call them kickboards uh, i mean obviously again so it's not going to rot now i guess we could talk about that Maybe the pickets that come in contact with the top of the concrete gravel board might rot slightly sooner than the. Is that is that the case, guys? You guys see that rot where it comes in contact with the concrete? There's a slight chamfer on the um, gravel boards anyway, so the water does run off a little bit. 
my thinking was sometimes we see issues with uh, with particularly cedar material that comes in contact with concrete. I think it's because of the nature of the concrete. Uh, just the it's a chemical reaction, really. Uh, but but that's on really old material. Yeah. You know, this this isn't year five or six. This is year twenty five or thirty. Yeah. The rest. I still think, I mean, in this case, you've got two foot of separation between the picket and the soil. The soil is going to be, you know, the aerobic zone in the soil is predominantly what leads to excessive rot in wood products. It's not necessarily just moisture. You've got to have the microbes in the soil that are also contributing to that. So again, I like this fence system. If we could try to make this more normal here in the United States and North America in general, I think the fencing industry would likely be better for it. But again, let me know your thoughts on that. Absolutely perfect, guys. See that finish? It pays the shoulder. That's how you want to finish your fence. It's one of these castle tops where you're missing a bit of panel. Traders hate that. He's not very professional. So if you want to do a professional job, Finish it on the shoulder. It looks absolutely beautiful that way. Next thing, the post. Oh. Grab the potato again. This is another tool. Oh, here we go. If you haven't got a saw, or you haven't got an angle grinder with a diamond blade, you're going to have to dig that hole a little bit deeper. But we already know that's two foot. We set a plate up. It's not the best time guys in my, in my uh, toolbox or what. You know that's 88 inches. But then we mark the post. Pick the best side of the post. If you have got a slight damaged post or you can get away with it in the old, put that bit in the old so you've got a nice perfect post on the other side. Eighty-eight inches, and then we'll cut that off. So that's the that's the case where you'd want to have that steel concrete. Right, I need Stevie for the assistance of that. What we're doing now, the post has been cut. We lift it in. As demonstrated by Stevie. Right, the post is in the hole. Next stage, get a knife. The bag open, ready for the water. Level off as we go. A bit of water in the hole just to get that those things sitting at the bottom. A little bit more post treat. Then, if you have got any rocks or anything else, you can chuck in. But what that does, if you chuck a rock in there a few rocks now it builds the area a bit more so that one bag of post is sufficient for one hole as i'm doing this stevie's leveling as it goes are you happy with that in the right place Level. Boom. absolutely beautiful <laughs> Again, there's one thing fence guys love to talk about it's concrete how do you mix it do you use wet concrete versus dry concrete? Do you use compaction if you're using dry concrete? We love to argue about how to use concrete correctly. Uh, so what Dave and Stevie are doing here is precisely how we mix our concrete. We put water in the bottom of the hole, add in the concrete, any aggregate rocks that are in the area, and then put more water on top. Uh, and then I'm sure they're going to go through and probably agitate the concrete itself. Uh, we use a rock bar is what we have on hand uh, to make sure that water mixes throughout uh, any concrete that doesn't receive moisture will pull moisture out of the uh, surrounding ground or also pull up or down out of the water that's put below and above it. But again, as with a lot of things, if you have a process that works better for you than you think this process would, that's probably the best process for you. It does say on these bags, two litres of water on 
on a high hot day like today, because it gets absolutely scorching, as you may see from my brow, I'm sweating. Two years of water is fishing. As you can see, Steve is just aggravating the hole. Make sure that fish can right mixed in. <laughs> There you go, guys. One posting, ready and setting. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you do like what you see, hit that like button. And if you have got any questions, leave a comment below and we'll answer them. See you soon, guys. So one thing to note, they left the concrete below grade again, and they backfilled with dirt. We see this in a lot of review videos, and it's a process that I like seeing. Uh, because then the grass will seed around the post and it'll be a nice finished look. Guys, I think they did a great job. Let me know what you think. Uh, oh, of course, man. if you're looking for another fencing channel to follow, I recommend DJ Projects. Uh, these guys are up to some great stuff. Uh, it's a little bit different being that it's UK versus uh, North America. It's always interesting to see how you know things are done differently in different areas. These guys are up to great stuff. They've got a great channel. Can't recommend following them enough. If you'd like to watch, watch the original video, we'll have it linked in the description below. But for now, I'm Joe Evers, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbor. And that's it. That's the oh, wicked. Brilliant. No, that was a good video, Joe. <laughs> well, so we had to edit it for time. Uh, I had a little bit in there about the grab about the grab van because I said this before, and we talked about this for a while. I think this is an incredible. You know, incredible concept yeah. that you cannot find here in the states. You can't, and e not even in Mexico, not even in Canada. Because I thought, well, maybe Canada, because you know, maybe, uh, and we'll just import it into the states. No, 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 you cannot buy those here. Uh, I, Crazy. I so I need to buy a ship, and I need to buy a few, <laughs> and just bring them on over. Uh, we'll have to switch the seats. Uh, we'll have to figure out how to do that. Okay. To switch the controls because you know we drive from the left so as opposed to the right but that's all stuff we can figure out we can we can figure that stuff out but no those those grab vans it they make so much sense they really do you know you can tip with them you can grab i mean you can grab all of your aggregate or so the way my mind is thinking about this is and you guys have done it for like fence removal mm. right you, you simply grab it Throw it in the back and then go and, and tip it at the dump. Uh, awesome. It's a great process, and I don't understand. I don't understand why we're so behind on this one, to be honest with you. But we'll we'll figure that out. So let me skip. Let's get back to the comments. T. Norton says, "What make of vans do you use?" Is that us or yeah? Well, it is ourselves. We use Fords for say the transits and then the grab is a mercedes so so those four transits are nice we've got a uh, we've got transit 250 we use those things are just you can put a million miles on them and they'll be fine yeah, yeah. uh so backroom properties would like to know any tips on stopping or minimizing warping when storing pressure treated timber i'm having to order timber months in advance but struggling with slats warping over time any tips lads if you're storing them outside, then they're going to warp and twist. Uh, we store a lot of our timber inside. The timber we store inside, we, we tend to find it don't warp and twist because it don't dry out as fast. I think the sunshine and the elements outside dry it out. So I think that's where we're struggling. Yeah. Well, yeah, so sunshine, but also it's that, yeah. that cycle of getting wet and dry and wet and dry yeah. all the time. It could try topping it up. Some, putting some tarp sheets over it, keeping the moisture in it a bit longer. Yep. That might help. Yeah. If well, it has space. And keep the sun off of it. Yeah. yeah it, it does two things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Steve Higginson says, it's amazing to see DNJ putting Nottingham on the map. We're not always, we've not always had the best reputation as a city, but we're definitely on the up. Definitely. Thanks we're to DNJ. <laughs> you guys will have keys to the city here in a little bit. You guys Dude, are <laughs> statues. <laughs> uh, Curtis Lehman says, "Phenomenal what you guys are doing. It's all love and wish you much success." Oh, big up, Curtis. Thank you, Curtis. Curtis used to be an employer of ours. 
Oh, so, very good. Yeah. yeah. Way in the beginning. Yeah, well. the beginning when I very, yeah. very, very first started. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Well, we've got history together. We're, we're, we're good friends. Good friends. Well, and I think that speaks volumes for you guys. You know that that you can have a team member, an employee that that had worked for you in the past that still comes back and has great things to say. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you very much, Curtis. Jacob says, uh, "Love a Berlingo." It was my first ever vehicle. Wish I never sold it now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not so familiar what, what, with the Berlingo. So it's a Citroen Berlingo. Just a small little van that my dad started the company with and he will never, ever sell that. <laughs> I hear you. Good, good, good. So this is, Dean's got a question. I always use two bags per hole. Didn't think I could get away with one. 100% you can use one. If you're going to use, if you're doing, say, a six-foot fence and it's an eight-foot post, there's absolutely no reason why you can't use one bag. If you're going above six foot, then we always go that extra. But again, going back to what my dad said, if you're going to be able to use rocks and stones that are around the area, that's doing the exact same thing as a post creek. It's forming a bond together. If you're just going to chuck a, an extra foot of soil in there, it's not really going to cut it because it could move over time. But if you're going to bond it using rocks, then you're absolutely perfect with one bag. Um, up to that six foot mark, I say. It's about getting the hole in the right place as well. Digging a nice tight hole and getting it in the right place first time. Yeah. Otherwise, you are going to use two bags, three bags. Yeah, that's the uh, size of the crater matters. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nate says, Dave, go over to the U.S. Show them how it's done. <laughs> we're going to see him a bit backwards, you know, because we were using these, you know, these ancient type materials over here. We were not so progressive as to use, you know, the concrete. So I don't know. We'll have to. So that that's an interesting thought, guys, that that I go over. I come meet you guys up there and uh, learn, learn the concrete post, the gravel boards, how to properly build it. Uh, and then over time is is providing it takes off here uh maybe have you guys over here and say Ooh, yeah. and then that way you can say oh okay well you did this wrong and that wrong and the other wrong <laughs> right, we could use that we could use that. Uh, that that's the thing yeah we would bring in the professionals absolutely from a stain man perspective that's a lot of concrete to work around <laughs> yeah so so for in the staining trades like they're very concerned with properly like tarping off or pre-wetting concrete so that the stain doesn't, so it only stains the timber, not the concrete. I, I bet, yeah, from a staining professional perspective, yeah, that is a tremendous amount of concrete to try to work but, around. But with our system, you can lift them panels out. So we can lift them out, stain them, and then slide them back in. So that's actually the first time I saw this system of fence. I was talking with Caleb. So, you know, stain and seal experts, they do fence staining. He had recommended a video that we watched during a live. Yeah, and that's simply it. You you pull the panel, and this 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 was it. Do you guys do that, or was it someone? It might be someone else. They had a tow behind um, stain tank that they would fill up and simply dip them and then put them back. It's no. not. It's not us. No, but right. uh, okay. Uh, that's that system we use is purely for that. So if the panel rots out, you change it. Yeah. If the customer wants to re-stain re them, they can just lift them out, re-stain them, let them dry, and then slide them back in. Yeah. Yeah, it's that was probably a year and a half ago or so that I watched that video. But yeah, it was just a it was a pull behind uh trailer that was uh that they add that is really thin, right? So it doesn't hold a lot of stain, but you fill it three quarters of the way up so that it doesn't overflow. And then they just simply push the panel down into it, pull it up, Ooh. let it dry. Done. Pretty neat. Nate UK says, transit <laughs> backbone of Britain. Backbone definitely. Of Britain. Yeah, sure. definitely. Rick Lang with Steve and Alex says, so long, guys. See you tomorrow at 12. See, See you later. later. Agreed. Agreed. Simon Scott says, love D&J vlogs. Keep them coming, chaps. Well, we will do. We have no intention of stopping anytime soon. Gary Stewart says, need to call the trucks. 
I'm dad, and the other one, I'm son. <laughs> That's good. I like that. That, that is quite good. That I is like quite that. good. That's good, Gary. 125 SM says, good evening. Good evening, and I'm sure we'll see you in the YouTube comments tomorrow because I recognize you. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Background says, yes, they're outside in a small storage area. Thanks for the tarp tip. I'll try to keep the sun off them. Cheers for the tip. Wish I had a large indoor storage area. So I'll say this about tarps. One lesson we learned is uh, we were tarping for quite a while. You want to use, we found that we like to use canvas tarps. Yeah. Uh, the, the reason being it lets, it lets the air flow to a certain extent. Uh, we had used uh, plastic tarps for quite a while, but those promote mold. Yeah, because they trap moisture in. They don't let any moisture escape or anything like that. You're not wanting to trap moisture in. Really, you're just trying to slow that process. Yeah, um, yeah. It still needs to breathe. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Even though he's not got a large indoor storage area, like you say, with there's still tips and tricks that you can yeah. use to keep it. Because we didn't have an indoor area for years, yeah. and we still managed to sort of work, make it work. Yeah, you can store it in a shaded area. Work out where the sun's falling and everything else. And like I say, with the canvas tops, yeah. Hessian, Hessian ones, they're, they're good as well. So our so our lumber's still stored outside. Mm -hmm. we, we still don't have the storage area. We, we bought a new set of buildings here, but they're predominantly uh, office and then workshops. Um, so we're still working on we're still working on getting our, our lumber inside. Uh, but now, so the, the lumber supplier we buy from now, all the timber comes pre-wrapped. So we no longer have that concern, uh, but yeah, but it still stays outside. It can stay outside. It's it's not that that's the worst thing in the world. Is it better if it comes inside? Absolutely. But just because you don't have inside storage doesn't mean no, it's not that, the end of the world. That's right. That's right. That's right. Can't be okay. Says the <laughs> other benefit of concrete post is also you can change the style of panel whenever suits. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Love that idea. Oh. So. Yeah, you know, I could I could see that. I could see, you know, someone buying a home coming in and saying, Well, this style doesn't necessarily suit our style. We would prefer it be changed. That's it. it that's the beauty of it. You're not stuck forever. You yeah. can you can manipulate and change that panel whenever you feel like it. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You, and like you we said, you could change the color easily, mm -hmm. you could change the style easily. Yeah. Uh, and, and repairs have to be pretty easy too. You know, if if one of those gravel boards is cracked, okay, well, the panel comes up, the damage comes out, the new goes in, and you're on about it. That's it. That's exactly it. As long as the installer has done it to the correct measurement of the six-foot standard size, because otherwise then it can be a little bit trickier. You've got to measure everything up. But typically, nine times out of ten, it's at six foot. Yeah, very good. So – let me ask you guys. So talking about concrete posts and gravel boards, the top of the post, are the top of the post flat or they, they look almost looked angled? Yeah, they're angled. Aren't yeah, they? there's like a pyramid shape. You can you, you can get different styles, Joe. You can you, there's okay. one with a bubble on, and then there's one with like a yeah. semicircle on. All it is is the rubber mold inside the yeah, mold change. form. So you can change them how to whatever you would like. Okay. Yeah, so that makes sense. So when we're talking when we're talking about molds, are you guys going to do a video soon on the post <laughs> yeah. gravel boards? Yeah, it, it, every time I go into that that concrete side, they've got the stereo on that lad. Yeah, <laughs> I cut. Yeah. I, I go in with the camera and I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to stop them because they're in they're in motion. Yeah, and they're in in their own zone and everything else. So I don't want to go in there, turn the radio down. Hang on a minute, I'm just going to do a quick film. <laughs> It slows them down, and them guys work so hard in there. Oh yeah, so hard. So well, as soon as the, as soon as that mix mixes with the water, your yeah. your countdown starts. Yeah. Like you've yeah. got to keep moving. Minute counts in that room, and they do an absolutely outstanding job. They honestly, they deserve all the props that they could ever get. Honestly, they do a good job in there. Yeah, because it's hard work as well. It's, it is hard work. Oh, yeah, it's heavy. It's very heavy work. Hard and dirty. You know, I mean, that's dealing with concrete dust is is no joke. I mean, it gets everywhere. Yeah. When so, when you're making the posts and the gravel boards, how long do you typically let those cure before you you bring them out? 
we pop them next day. Okay. Okay. So next, day. next day, as soon as, as soon as they come in in the morning, they're popping. Yeah. And there's it an alteration. So when the gravel boards that get, say the posts that get made in the morning, they will yeah. get popped in the morning as well. So the one, the posts that get popped in the evening, they don't get popped in the morning. They still have, they all get the same hours of cure in time. Okay. Just, they've worked it out quite well in there. They've discussed it between themselves and they've worked it out to how it works for them best. So yeah. they've got this little motion that they work to and it, and it seems to work well. Absolutely. And then once they're popped, they, they cure outside. So they carry on curing outside. So the right date on them, when they popped them, the date goes on them. And okay. then the stored outside, and then it's it can be up to two weeks before they're even using them. Well, and one one thing you guys had discussed too in one of the other videos was you know sometimes you'll work ahead through the winter, yeah, to have to have a big store. So really, that concrete shop just continues at a steady pace through the year. Yeah. All right. That's yeah. yeah this I, I'd really like to wrap my head around this more. And the gravel boards, I'm going to make a video on it. Absolutely, hundred percent. I, I would love to see it. I really would, just from a process standpoint. Yeah. We'll, um, show, we'll show everything because, like we say, we're not we're not bothered about anyone else seeing it yeah. because it is quite a simple sort of process anyway. So there's nothing really too hide. But we're we're hundred percent happy to do that. I'm I'm a big fan of that, guys. Because here here's my thought too: is I, I say this a lot on the channel, but a rising tide raises all the ships. Right, so if we can if we can spread inf information, spread education, you know, the best case scenario is you share the process and someone writes something in the comments below. Hey guys, have you thought about this? We do it a little bit different. Oh, okay. Maybe that shaves a couple minutes off here or there, and then it makes a big difference. So the molds you guys use. Is it so you said a rubber mold? So is it a rigid mold on the outside and then a rubber mold on the inside? So yeah, it's a steel carriage on the outside okay. to keep the form, and then it's polyurethane sleeve inside, and then the rubber stop ends. So it all folds okay. into each other. You press it in this into the steel, and that's what keeps its shape. Very and then good. the four steel bars, which are attached by plastic clips, that slides inside, and then your concrete in that. Okay, yeah. So the rubber clips hold the re the reinforcement. That makes sense, and it. How how long do those rubber molds are they pretty are they pretty durable? Yeah, yeah, they can make thousands and thousands and thousands. As long as you look after them, yeah, and you you, you, you clean them off after every yeah. every pour because the molds all get cleaned every, every as soon as that post is popped. It's they don't move on to the next post until that mold is clean, sprayed, steel in, ready for the next day. Because obviously it's a process. There is no point being behind if they don't put the, if they don't spray and don't put the steels in. They're behind for tomorrow, so yeah. um, it the they have a full on process that they go through post molds and gravel board molds. Very good. In in the gravel board molds, you guys have several different options on those, right? You've got just a. I've seen ones that look like a, a rock. They have a rock mold on yeah. one side, and then some are smooth. Yeah. yeah. Very and then good. there's a few different options as well, but we they're the the two most popular by a hundred percent. And then we do one where. There's a, say, a six-inch circumference of a circle cut out in the middle of it to help hedgehogs climb through garden to garden to help help keep preserving the hedgehogs. Interesting. It's not shown yet, so we will show. No, I have not seen something like that. Yeah, a lot of people are asking about them as well because obviously some gardens back on to, say, little bits of foresters and stuff, um, and obviously hedgehogs are a dying breed over in, in the UK anyway, so... It's to help the hedgehogs stop getting trapped in gardens to move from garden to garden. Okay. And are hedgehogs beneficial? Beneficial. Is it beneficial? I think so. They're, they're cute. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, okay. look, it's a bit like a porcupine. Yeah. Part. To be fair, like, mm. yeah. I don't know. So, uh, we say hedgehog holes, but it, it could be anything. It could be it could yeah. be bunnies. It could be of course. Yeah. It could be absolutely anything. But it's not just to trap something in the garden. Yeah. Because um, obviously some people have massive gardens at the same sure. time with a lot of shrubberies, and we don't want to trap wildlife in. So if we can help, yeah. that's what we do tend to do with those gravel boards. Yeah, and six inch being small enough that 
you know, the, the, the dog can't get out. The yeah, you're not having dogs or uh, cats really go through. It's not too sure. crazy big. Um, well, cats. It depends on the customer as well. Yeah, and cats can go over. Yeah, you know, they just climb. So we we get this request once in a while. They'll say, "Well, I've got some cats and I'd like to keep them in. How tall of a fence should I get?" <laughs> <laughs> you you could build you could build the wall of China and yeah. the cats would go over. You got to put a top on it, and that's a whole that's a whole different mess. Um, and I'm sure this is going to vary with everyone, but. So say so say your guys are really getting on good and, and the system's figured out. How many posts and gravel boards do, do they make in a day? Does it vary probably? They make roughly 120 to 130 posts a day. Okay. And then there's, I think... 120 again, right? I think it's 140. 140. I think it's 140 gravel boards a day. And wow. then there's little extras and stuff like... Slabs, slabs coping and, stones. and coping stones where they do little runoffs every now and again. Yeah. And then there's the uh, big big block mode. Yeah, the big block Yeah, mode. the big blocks. <laughs> you guys have been cranking those out. Yeah. It looks really it, good now. We've, we've, we've done even more. So okay. It looks good. Yeah, that, um, what do you say, uh, sharp sand area. Sand, yeah. Yeah. Really coming together. Yeah. It is indeed, yeah. Looks nice. All right, let's see. Let's catch up. Let's catch up. So... Fat Finger says, "Great chat, chaps. Love D and J videos. Come on, England. Yeah, the, the, we're bringing it home, mate. It's coming <laughs> home. I need not worry. It's coming home. Oh, so this is a question I agree with. Any resin jobs coming? Resin pathway. Well, yeah. yeah so, so David did a video of of re doing the resin for his parents' drive. That was incredibly interesting to watch." Any any of those coming up is the question. We've got a path coming up, but the the thing with the resin, I only like to do it when the weather's right. And in the UK, the weather is so unpredictable. <laughs> so my my parents, my mum and dad, have been waiting for that job for God six months or so. Oh wow! Just for the right day and yeah. everything else. And then obviously with the pandemic hitting and everything else, resin was quite hard to get hold of as well. So. Yeah, that, that, that job's been booked in with my mom and dad for ages. <laughs> well, it probably needs to be the right set of days, doesn't it? It needs to cure yeah. properly and the rest. Yeah. All right. Backroom says, canvas tarps on order. Cheers, guys. Very good. Hedgehogs, keep the slugs down in your garden. Yeah, that's it. Good to know. Yeah. Good to know. Stop someone from eating the plants and all your vegetation. Makes sense. Good live, Joe. I'm heading over to the DNJ channel to check out the process. You, Thank you. you Kenny, Kenny, Kenny and I know each other. Kenny, I think you would really get a kick out of this, knowing that you and I like a lot of the same things. Uh, I think you'll get a kick out of it for sure. Gary says, congrats on passing your HGV, Stevie. Uh, does that now? Does that now you can ask for a pay raise? Yeah, skip this uh, one quick. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We'll block that comment straight out. It's gone. <laughs> uh, no, yeah. So, yeah, the question is, so you Americans don't have concrete posts like the UK? No. Well, okay, I say no. Not in residential. So, along highways and interstates, we do. When the but these fences are 30, 40, 50 feet tall, and they're made in precast concrete plants. Just the same precast plants that make, you know, huge buildings. So they just stand up. Um, so they do have them there, but in the residential market, in the commercial, which we, we don't deal in anything that that big, right? The industrial scale, we stick in residential and commercial. We don't, uh, as of right now, we'll say that. Coming soon. As, Coming soon. That's right. Yeah. That's right. DG services, artificial grass specialists, in, uh, we love DNJ projects here in Ireland. I've been watching them from the get go. We are a lot smaller company as DNJ, but similar we, uh, but similar as we are father and son business. Oh, oh brilliant! Is, no, that's like, like we said. We're we're actually big fans of the Irish. With um, my mum being part Irish as well, so we've got a, a soft spot for the Irish. And to see that it doesn't matter how big or small you are, we, we 
yeah. just keep doing what you're doing. We love that. And with the father son business, that's that's wicked. Yeah, generational businesses are really neat, right? It, because I think be, they're especially neat to me and to you guys because oh. you know that it takes it's a different dynamic working mm. with family. It, it really is. Um, so yeah, it's it's neat to see here in the states. You really don't see generational businesses at all anymore. Um, so we're we're third generation. It was my grandfather and his brother in law that started the business. Uh, my grandfather bought it, and my dad bought it from my grandfather, and I bought it from my dad. Now I've got a son that's three, and my wife doesn't like this joke, but I call him my retirement plan. <laughs> <laughs> one, one day I'm going to grow up, and this all will be sold to him. Uh, she doesn't like that at all. Uh, but it, it's kind of true. Uh, and, and you know, in, in construction in general, like that's usually the way of it, right? We've got a son or, or sons plural, uh, that we bring up in the business and, and, and that's the dream as a dad, right? That one day you, you bring your kids yeah. into it and your kids pick it up where, where you left off and take it even further. Yeah. That's the dream. Try it. Gareth Hughes, afternoon. And I'm new here and love your videos, DJ. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Agreed. Agreed. Very good. Uh, guys, I spent a lot of time asking you questions. What what questions do you guys have? I'm sure there's some. Just want to know when you're going to get that concrete sorted, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> this is no point talking about it. Well, yeah, I know it's all it's all talk until it actually happens. So once we once we release the uh, the post and the gravel board mold video, we're expecting big things from you. Yeah, yeah. well, it's so yeah, so I'm going to start the process of figuring out. I mean, there's got to be a supplier here in the states that sells molds, you know, such as those. If not. We can we can figure out how to get them here. Like that's not a problem. Um, the next, you know, the next is is where do you build them, right? So we we were, it's funny. We went from thirteen hundred square feet, office shop combined, to now we're roughly at thirteen thousand square feet, office shop combined, and we're already out of space. Mm. You know, shops are full and everything's full. So we got to figure out. We got to figure that part of it out too, but I want to, I really do. Like I, it, the concept makes so much sense. And the reason I'm a big fan of it is because it's good for the customer or it's good for the client. There's yeah. still, the cost can't be, the cost will be different obviously, but if it's better for the client, if it makes for a better fence, then ultimately it makes for a better industry. Yeah. Ooh. But I'll tell you, there's some folks that aren't going to like it in the fencing business because there's some folks that aren't big fans of steel post because their comments are that they make a fair amount of business from repairing and replacing fences. And when they don't have to replace timber posts anymore, that takes away part of their business. I personally think that's the wrong way of thinking about it. Yeah. You know, that's, you know, when, when you think for yourself first, that's generally, it's generally not good for anybody. Right. It's, What's good for the client is good for the industry, I, I feel yeah. like. And moving with the times as well. Like you, mm -hmm. you have not got to just stay where you are forever. You can you can move forward. That's right. Well, or, or you don't. And then you, you got to figure out something else to do. Mm -hmm. But I'm a big fan. So we're going to start figuring this out. And then I do want to take a trip to come see you guys. I do. Yeah, uh, just because the more I watch it, the more like the more questions I get and – I learn best from putting my hands on things. Yeah. Right. We, we could talk about it all day and I can watch a lot of videos and I'll have a pretty good idea, but there's some things you just learn by touching it. Yeah. So, so yeah. it sounds like I must cover someone in the concrete place. Yeah. So when they're on older, he can cover. <laughs> <laughs> Come on over. We got a job for you. You'll learn a lot. I promise. <laughs> let, let me ask. So you guys have, you guys have busier times and slower times, I would assume. Yeah, this this season. So summertime is is a busy time for us because everyone's getting out there barbecuing. So they all want to vamp the gardens up. Yeah. So are you guys in, in the middle of your busy season now? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, yeah. it's yeah. very busy. Yeah, yeah it, it's the same. So yeah, it, so probably what we ought to do 
is figure out a time, maybe this fall or winter, uh, and to put this together. That way, slower time for you guys, slower time for us here to where because it, it'll be a process getting there and coming back, so it won't be a quick. <laughs> but uh, I would like to put that together. I really yeah, would. Yeah, that's right. Modern well Coast. You could show you could you could take me out and show me how to properly build. Fan. I think that make for a good video for the both of us. Yeah, you know, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna go to the UK and learn how to build this properly, and you guys could be like. Hey, this guy from the States is coming. We got to teach this guy how to build fence right. <laughs> <laughs> so would planning be an issue with with building a fence with concrete posts for residential clients? No, I, I don't see planning uh, being an issue. I, in what regard, I would ask? Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't think. No, I don't, I don't think so. It wouldn't be any different than building fence with any other post. I really don't think. Um, no, I don't believe so. D and J projects. Well, what is the retail price for your roadstone, gravel boards, concrete post in England? That's probably called the office thing. Yeah. Give the office a call. We can discuss that. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, if you ask me right now what the cost of fence is, no idea. Like I've got a pretty good idea, but I don't know exactly because, they handle that in the office, you know, I, and, and there's also the discussion. We talked about this before last time, but there's also the, the discussion that we can't, we can't talk about pricing in a public format, right? At least here in the States. So we have, we've got laws about anti-collusion and all that. And this comes up in the Facebook groups quite often. People say, well, what do you guys charge to build this? And I want to make sure I'm charging enough. The problem is part of this act, Part of the law is just simply price comparison. So it's against the law for us to sit, if we're in the same industry, for us to talk about pricing. So, and that's a gray area. So a lot of people say, well, they're not going to arrest me until they do, right? Like no one ever thinks it's going to be them until it is. Um, anyway, so retail price, the office would know it. Give them a ring. Brian says, evening, gents. Hoping you're all doing well. Massive fans of the DNJ channel and brand. I've seen you use plugless fence fixing when fitting gate posts uh, to the yeah. wall. I'm interested in what I'm interested in what using some what what's the brand? It's all about uh, concrete yeah, screw. Yeah, it's, it's all about a concrete screw we use. So there's a concrete okay. screw, isn't it? You don't use a plug. So you, you drill a, a six mil hole or six point five. And the, the bit, the screw goes straight into the concrete with no fixing, and it's yeah. absolutely solid. Yeah. So, what is the brand called? Spark. Spartex. What's the brand called with them concrete screws? We'll find it. Not Spark. Samak. Samak. So, trans, uh, Samak and the flanged concrete screw. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, that's that make that sounds like similar to like if we're installing a fence on a concrete pad, we would do the, much the same thing. A plate as a fix to the post. Yeah. Uh, here in the states, the brand's Tapcon. Uh, you would you would drill a hole and then screw in the Tapcon. But yeah, they are solid. They're incredibly strong. Yeah. Uh, all right. So DJ Services, we'll, we're gonna start wrapping this up because these guys. We need to make sure tomorrow's video gets up. We need to make sure. <laughs> At all costs, the video must go up. Uh, DJ Projects, what are you guys seeing? Are you guys seeing a massive increase in private clients spending money on garden projects this year? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think because people can't go away, yeah, uh, they're spending more money on their gardens and revamping the gardens just purely so they, they've got an outdoor space to go to. Yeah. And obviously, if it's summertime, we can spend it in the gardens with the kids and do stuff with the kids and families. Absolutely. Uh, we're, we saw this, we're seeing the same thing. And it, it's funny, again, the similarities and differences. But you're right in that people are spending more time at home, whether it's for work or for pleasure. You know, a lot of folks here are still working from home. So when you spend more time in your backyard, you notice that fence is supposed to have been replaced. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We meant to do that last year. That's right. Um, and so so for us, more and more venues are opening up to the public now. 
But one thing that was happening was, uh, so if you had a group of friends and you used to go down to the bar, you used to go to dinner, well, those places were closed. So you would help, you would host folks over to the house for barbecues and such, but you still want to get together. You still want to see your friends. Um, so yeah, that's, that's one thing we saw was more people spending more time in the yard yeah. building fences because of it. All right. A couple things. Brian says, thank you. For that. No worries. You guys looking forward to the football tonight. Yes, we, we are. are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've been over that. We're uh, England's got to bring it home is what I hear. I don't. Yeah. Uh, Ryan says, yeah, we need Sunday's video. DNJ, love watching you. My son at 4 a.m. on Sunday. All right. There you go. Yeah, so, I mean, so you must be over here probably. Well, no. So that's that West Coast United States maybe. Because I think right now from, from Central United States, we're six hours. Um, six hours behind. So that sounds like they're eight hours behind. So, yeah, probably West Coast United States. There you go. Gareth says, how far would – D and J, how far would you go for work? Because I live in Liverpool and need my back garden. <laughs> we get to get this quite a lot right at the minute, but uh, in all honesty, we're pretty much just Nottingham based. Is is that much work in Nottingham that it, it it just wouldn't? It's not the right fit for us right now. Yeah. To be fair, we're, we're booked up till next year as well. So, <laughs> well, and that's yeah, that's the thing is you have to kind of realize that could you? Sure. But by the time you factor in travel time, you know, lost lost work time, that sort of thing, it would probably get fairly expensive as well. We'd love to help. Of course, yeah. we'd love to help everyone. Yep. Absolutely. DG says, thank you, guys. No worries. Yeah, thank you, buddy, for being, being there. I'm not going to say the name. Can't be. Says, thanks, <laughs> lads. Excellent stream. <laughs> Les Wood says, I watch DJ every Sunday and Wednesday here in Denmark. Great to see honest contractors. No, thank, thank you. you. Appreciate Agreed. that. Thank you very much for watching. Agreed. Guys, I I appreciate you giving your time so openly. I really, really do appreciate that. Yeah, we love, we love we it, it, honestly. Well, I, I know you guys probably probably hit it extra hard today to make sure the things got done <laughs> so that you can be home. So I really, I really do appreciate that. I do. Yeah, no thank worries. you. Guys, if you're watching and you'd like to find, learn more about DNJ Projects, their channel is linked in the description below. I'll go ahead and give it a click. Go over and follow these guys. They've got great content. I enjoy watching it. I think you will, too. But, yep, for now, I'm Joe Evers, the fence expert with DNJ Projects, dad and son. We're wishing you guys another happy day. I'm reminding you that good fences make good neighbors, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>